for you. Hello, everybody, and welcome to chapter 35 of Known Realms to Lash. As you can see, we have our cast as normal and a phenomenal guest. Everybody, put your hands together for the one, the only, Tali! Me? Oh my you. goodness. Where am I going? This way? Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> so, we have uh, our second guest for Known Realm Celeste. And before we dive into the adventure, let's go ahead and introduce our players, starting with Tali. Please tell us who you are, where we can find you, and what you're doing. Hi, my name's Tali. Um, most of the internet knows me as Barnaby. I use they, them pronouns. So you can find me at that's underscore Barnaby on anywhere that still has social media at the moment. So you can catch me on Twitter, uh, TikTok, Instagram. I am a digital artist in the TTRPG space and a good friend with a lot of the cast here. So I'm glad to be here and glad to be welcome in the space. We are honored to have you and so excited to be here. All right. Angie. Hello. Hi. I'm Angie. They the pronouns. I will be playing Zio Marino as always. He their pronouns. You can find me anywhere on the internet where it matters at Aegonthetic. And um that's that's pretty much it. I am <laughs> scared. I don't know why everybody's scared. Like I'm some yeah. sort of mean, like I'm some sort of mean man who does mean things. <laughs> I'm just a little silly and I am yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being here, MG. We're very excited to have you. As always, back. We missed you last week, babes. TM was earlier. Lou. Apparently, I never left and was um, <laughs> being an icon as ever. That's mm -hmm. what I've heard. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't do anything. I promise. Um. But when I'm me, um, I'm I'm Lou, <laughs> and uh, I I'm she her pronouns, uh, and so does the character that I play, which is Lazuli, and we are here. <laughs> I'm good at intros as well. That's another fact about me. Incredible! You're phenomenal at intros. <laughs> thank um, you. Thank thank you. <laughs> uh, last but certainly not least, Button. Hello. I'm Button. I'm Blue Blue Button on social media. My pronouns are they, them. So are Echinacea's. Uh, and I'm so excited that Dolly's here. Oh, I'm just going to wiggle about it. Hell yeah. Um, <clears throat> as I said, my name is Alec. My pronouns are he, him. You can find me all places on the internet at Tales Archived. I'm the archivist here for Known Realms Talesh. I am the archivist for a bunch of other things that we are doing uh, here that will be airing uh, sooner rather than later. Uh, things that... Oh, hi, Lyra. How are you? Is that Lyra? My yes. Friend? Fuck. I was going to say, we need one more introduction, please. This is Lyra. She's very lovey and also very aggressive. Um, I love that about her. <laughs> she, her pronouns. <laughs> <laughs> Looking directly at the camera like, yes, it is me as I. Yo, she looks so pissed off for a second there. <laughs> Um, but she's also like, mother, give me affection. Mother, I demand it. Yep. <laughs> I will scratch you if you don't. I love it. <laughs> That's Lyra. Thank you, Lyra. So happy to mm -hmm. have you. Um, all right. So last we left off in chapter 34, the right path. Uh, we picked up with the party waking up in the humble abode. Zio was uh, awakened by Lulu, and uh, they had a very <laughs> cute exchange about Zio wanting to go do some things by himself. And then Lulu's like... Don't do that because stupid things happen to all of us all of the time. Uh, we shouldn't do that. And it made her upset. Uh, and then Zia was like, you know what? Yeah, I'll ask everybody. <laughs> I'll, I'll ask very people to ferocious. come with me. She was very yeah. ferocious. And I think the word she wanted to use was caddy. I don't think she, she didn't know what that word meant. Um, <laughs> so then uh, Zio headed downstairs to talk to uh, the group. And Richter had <laughs> let uh, them know that Lazuli was gone in the morning uh, with no note, no nothing, just disappeared. I made you look like such a bitch. <laughs> um, Zio, kind of uh, in, in a bit of a wee panic, uh, used the sigil. Uh, he made you look like you were being manipulated by a hag. 
<laughs> True. Um, use this. Uh, attempted to use locate object to find Lazuli's goggles to no avail. Then used their sigil to reach out, and I did my best Lazuli impression. Uh, Lazuli said, "Hey, everything's good. Uh, I'm just doing some work, and uh, y- you know, maybe because Viola asked." <laughs> and she was like. <sighs> You motherfucker, it's so hard to be mad at you. All right, sounds good. Have fun. Um, and then we picked up with Echinacea, who woke up to breakfast in bed from Kaylin. Um, Kaylin checked in on the night before, understanding that the conversation with Uliel must have been a difficult one. Not understanding the dinner with Monroe was also fucking difficult. <laughs> so the two had a conversation about um, uh, cowardice. They had conversations about... Uh, the burden of taking people's lives being put in hands of people like Monroe. Uh, they had a conversation about, <laughs> uh, you know, treating people with respect. Kalen was very adamant about Monroe uh, having not treated Echinacea with respect in that conversation. Um, and <laughs> He's fuck you and your problematic faith. He's so no. He's wait. He's perfect. <laughs> um, uh, and the two did what they could to be there for each other, but I think it was a very hard conversation for the both of them. Um, with that, they ate breakfast. Kalen revealed that he got them a bouquet, five new cookbooks uh, to expand their cooking repertoire, uh, and they had then decided to go downstairs. So many. Listen, we like cooking. It's great. Uh, Echinacea was then told <laughs> that Lazuli was nowhere to be found. <laughs> and then Echinacea called Lazuli and was like, hey, um, what the fuck, dog? And Lazuli was like, I'm not doing anything bad. I'm just kind of following this guy, making sure he has mm-hmm. tea, helping return books, that sort of thing. Uh, but it, a pretty little guardian angel. Liz, yeah, I'll do that. Lazuli made it clear that she was a pretty guardian angel double agent. Um, so, <laughs> uh, <laughs> how was that, Lou? Fuck yeah, dude. Um, so the group not quite happy with what with that situation there, but understanding that Lazuli is also trying to gain insights on Viola and what she may want. Say, okay, we're going to continue about our day. Um, Zio, wow. Zio, Echinacea, and Kaelin head into Narfolk to meet with Bright Fury members to try and learn more about the changeling druid that seems to be haunting Zio. Um, They meet... (laughs) They meet a hobgoblin mage by the name of Tartuk, uh, who reveals that this changeling's name is Vaughn, and he was one of the individuals in Aldengate in that troop that was supposed to be reported to by Zio. Um, In the attack uh, by the Viper's Hand, they had repeated words that Zio had said, uh, and not only killed Tartuk's brother, but Vaughn's sister. Um, so there seems to be that motivation of teaching a lesson that your selfishness has repercussions, and those repercussions have affected a lot of people. Um, in that time, Kaylin revealed to Echinacea that um, uh, Christopher Elmsong has give, gifted him land that he has not done anything with. He left the uh, he left what will be done to that up to Echinacea. Um, Zio helped used healing magic for the first time and healed a young lad who had scraped up his knee uh, to much excitement um, using the healing magic from the prelude that Echinacea and Zio had made the night before. Uh, From then, the group returned back to the humble abode because it was prelude time for Monroe, uh, but not before Kaelin had some choice words about if you're going to call Echinacea your friend, you better treat them like your friend. Um, (laughs) it was very hot. (laughs) Um, Monroe seems to be taking in the lessons, uh, and the words said by, uh, Zio, Lazuli, and Kaelin as the group eats shepherd's pie and then head upstairs. Um, Monroe apologizes and affirms that given the general distaste toward him, uh, by the group, he felt defensive and therefore unloaded on Echinacea like he did at the gala. He's a problematic fave, so he's problematic. Um, but after ex- he is fascinating logic, it's but it's true. 
is a problematic depraved, therefore he is problematic. Mm-hmm. Shut up. Um, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> I'm not looking to be logic right now. I'll be wrong all I want. Um, all right. After exchanging a fidget toy that is a phoenix that shifts into a rose, the two sit down and make Monroe's prelude, which is uh, made from the pocket watch that is actually a gift uh, given from Monroe's mother to his father. Um, But that has been set. And with that, the group prepares. Oh, no. First, Richter leaves back for Lock Hinge and the group meets (laughs) Uramil. I know. I made you look like such a bitch. (laughs) Um... Uh, Richter headed back to Lockhenge. The group met with Uramil, who said that he is going to be headed to Iothalor after he returns Richter back home. Um, with that, the group gets a knock on the door. Would you look at that? It's Roman Do. Nothing strange here. Um, Roman is like, hey, I hear you guys want to go to the munitions factory. Why don't you come with me? Uh, so they go to the munitions, or they get into a limo. <laughs> it is... Uh, Echinacea, Zio, Kaelin, Monroe, Roman. Uh, with a nat 20 insight check, Zio's like, that's not my man. That's not my man. Um, <laughs> is able to pick up on some mannerisms that are definitely not uh, Romans. Turns out it's Vaughn, the changeling druid. And he's like, well, if you're going to go do this thing, I'm coming with you because it is ultimately good. And is treat uh, Vaughn is treating this as... A test for Zio. The group, with some really clutch, uh, Echinacea disguises themselves as fucking Gale Umbridge and is like, hey, let me in. Uh, get the fucking crew out of here. Completely clears a building, enters as Gale Umbridge, um, is able to grab an Aether Core from the, uh, the uh, conveyor belts that, that run uh, the munitions depot, take it. Uh, Zio and Vaughn are able to completely uh, dismantle and uh, tear down the gunpowder by using wet dirt. Um, It is rendering it useless. Um, And Monroe goes up to the third floor to try and find his uh, quarry, who the group hears (laughs) this grown white man throw a fit. It seems like somebody tipped off Kelris to fucking leave. Spoiler alert, it was (laughs) Kalen. And with that, with all of this activity happening in the munitions depot, um, the devil in the basement, which the crew was informed about, heard some of the activity taking place and made her way upstairs. This pale, uh, white-skinned woman with white hair, yellow eyes, very angelic in appearance. Um, Why is everybody talking to me? What's happening? I'm no Lou. You said pale, and Lou got horny. I was just commenting on how God damn fast it. it happened. Um, <clears throat> in, still in the visage of Gale Umbridge, Echinacea stood toe to toe with this devil, and Zio, forgetting in the moment that the sigils can be heard by people outside, said the name Echinacea, <laughs> and this displayed the devil's ability to understand souls to tap into the names, names have power, tapping into things that maybe Echinacea may want. With that, combat started. Kaelin took a big old fucking necrotic bolt to the neck, 74 points of necrotic damage in one hit, but the group managed to escape. Uh, They headed out of the city, uh, right outside of the gates, and managed to... um, uh, Kaelin summoned a tiny hut where the group could stay safe outside of the city, not feeling safe enough to venture back into the humble abode. Um, Echinacea learned to spell. Kaelin and Monroe stood up, uh, stayed up all night. Uh, Kaelin was uh, sitting with Echinacea as they learned the spell. Monroe was outside with a fucking rifle like, what the fuck? <laughs> and then uh, Zio hung in the, uh, the tiny hut until the morning where they had exited and watching the natural world swirl around them, decided to summon not only Halitus, but Isterus as well. We ended the session with wind 
and earth combining as this Vakron, this elemental entity of air, and this Famar, this strong elemental of earth, stand face to face. But we're not going to pick up there. We're going to find ourselves in Driften, north of where you guys are. Oleander, you wake yeah. in the home of Lisette and Lowell to the smell of rich cinnamon, dark chocolate toffee, and coffee and tea being made in the morning. Mm. The smell of sweet winter flowers. As you know now, we're in Marpanoth. It is beginning to shift into the beautiful time of fall. You wake to hear the angelic sounds of babies cooing as Flora wakes and just sort of... Oh, oh. Would you like to describe your character? Yeah. Um, so Oleander is a eight foot Aladrin, um, has a bit of a high top fade with flowers sort of growing out of the top. Uh, his eyes are completely black with uh, like white irises. Um, wears a real simple long uh, linen uh, tunic, uh, white and then a, gr a green robe over top that uh, bears the symbol of the Sunflower Enclave. Um, most of those things normal on any Eladrin who should serve. Uh, the big thing that stands out is the huge um, elongated uh, tr tree arm uh, that kind of sits on the side. There are butterflies and bees and flowers sort of growing out of it with moss sort of lining not only the outside of the tree, but along the side of the neck. Um, they're real, they hunch um, being that they are taller than most people and having to talk to most people looking down they have a natural hunch to their to their walk um, when standing up straight eight foot but with the hunch closer to seven foot seven um <laughs> uh, very sweet um very calm uh kind of uh guy who smiles like with no teeth um and just always looks like he's tired mm. um but or like woke has woken up from a good nap yeah um, constantly. Perma-rested. Yeah, perma-rested. Um, you look to see as as Lowell with a swaddled um, Flora, this young infant that you met a couple days ago, uh, is wrapped around his chest, uh, just sort of playing with her father's beard, like tugging and he's like, ow, ow, all right, all right, you should not be that strong at this age. Morning, I, uh, I brought you breakfast, my friend. Oh, oh. Thank you. Oh, how was how was little C doing? Hi there. Hey, she's good. She's good. Uh, she's having trouble sleeping in the night, and I think that's just normal for uh, for young ones her age. Right. But um, um, try uh, try a bit of honey along the gums. Mm. It helps tremendously. It's a good idea. I was I was telling Lisa we should try some scotch, but she was uh, she was not very happy with that idea. Yeah, we exist in a different time, friend. Maybe, <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> but um, other than that, he kind of turns her around in the swaddle. She's quite happy. She's very much like reaching towards you, like instinctually. Uh, You're one of the first people she's ever seen in this world, and there's comfort there immediately. Uh, <sighs> I think he reaches out his long finger and sort of puts it out for her to grab onto with a little like butterfly walking their way down his finger and onto their face. Just sort of coos very comfortably. That, that finger sort of traces a, a cherub-like cheek as Flora immediately falls asleep to your touch. Um, and he's <laughs> uh, Lowell's like, I know you got things to do and I respect that they're important, but my God, you want to be a nanny? <laughs> uh, I have I have other things to tend to, unfortunately, friend. I, I uh, the wild that. mother calls. Gods and things like that. I I respect that, yeah. but um, we were sure to pack your some food for your journey. A oh. uh, bunch of that stew, some bread, fresh made by Lisette. Oh, oh. Uh, that, oh, you 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 honor me. I. You really don't need all this, but you, I will gladly take it. You honored us. You made sure I got here to meet my little girl. Thank right. you. Well, you're very welcome. Oh, 
he reaches and like grabs his stuff, um, reaches into his pocket, um, and reaches into his bag and pulls out a small little package of uh, seeds. Um, you, these are potatoes. They do well you, coming in from the fall and going into the winter. The last, just make sure that not too dry rot will sit in, but I'll, uh, take these, friend. I'll let, thank you very much. Uh, offers you a bow and just... I'll let Lee said no. She tends to the garden and she's got more of a green thumb than I ever could. Um, but please, if you're ever around, just stop on by. Of course. We've we've met. And as I said when we first met, all my friends call me Ollie. And we are now friends and you call me Ollie. And I know that the world will lead us back to one another once again. The wind's got a way of finding a pattern. And I know I'll see you again sooner than later, Audie. Uh, uh, can you point me in the direction of the city? Yeah. Uh, if you want to head to Elenbell, you're going to want to uh, head northward up that way. Um, you're wow. going to start hitting snow sooner than later. Uh, but the road's nice and clear. They usually keep it... Uh, Pretty well kept there, up in Shinfir, but border crossing should not be anything uh, uncouth. Just, you're a seed bearer, so just tell them that. They won't stop you. Very well. And kind of gets, he's been haunched over the entire time and kind of crawls his way across the floor to the door to, like, let himself out and kind of turns around and hunches down. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you're a hugger. You look like, I feel like Come you're here. a hugger. Yeah, come hug here. and uh, just hugs you kind of from the side, but the baby still swaddled on his chest, and he just you know, pats your back and just. It was an honor to meet Charlie. I appreciate it, and I wish you all the best in your journeys. Bless you, Lou. Oh, we are both we are both stewards of new life. I hope that you take care of the one that you have now, as well as I have taken care of the seeds that planted to the world preserve what we need to preserve and enrich the rest exactly all right best of luck all on your right. journey and you hear this kind yeah. of like shrill like you can't believe in please god it's been so nice to have just this beautiful and i mean lowell's wonderful he's my husband god i'll miss you she hugs lisa just hugs you really tight around the waist and just kind of squeezes you tight no well, the best part about missing means that we had a connection. Yeah. Missing means that we'll see each other again. Not had, have. Exactly, had. Yeah. I have. I apologize. No, no need to apologize, you big beauty. Kind of pokes you on the nose. All right. Good luck on your journey, and we'll see you soon. See you when the spring comes around. Mm, sits up and kind of gives a big stretch, having bent over. <laughs> yeah. Sound of like wood, sort of like creaking. Um, and begins uh, whistling and making their way, uh, making the way north. You start making your way north. I need you to make me a perception check, Oli. Uh, perception check. You've got it. Uh, where are these new beautiful dice that I have? There we go. And that is whenever my character sheet pulls up. Uh, perception, you said? Yes, please. Okay, that is a 20. You're connected with the wilds of this world in a way that not a lot of people are. And you are privy to the knowledge that each grove, each spit of land, each lake is subject to a guardian. One that tends to the wilds, protects its borders, and enriches the soil around it. Driften, being far more technologically advanced and modern, um, these creatures aren't unheard of, but they're far more reserved with who they approach. You do hear this low sort of Oleander as this What you see is this large black bear but larger than any black bear you've seen before, this blue arcane hue around the fur, its tough sort of dancing in the wind like the twigs on your arm. Its eyes are a pure pearlescent white, and the, this almost tribal tattooing pattern from head to hind 
covers this spirit guardian. Take a knee. Um, how may I be of service? I don't need that much formality, Oleander. But I come with word. From Ilthun, we are heralds. Both you and I. We are. What words do you have for me? There is a spin. In the natural world, two forces being brought together, air and earth, you are to bear witness. As it seems, there are seeds Where? here headed in the direction that you are. A flock to fly with. Uh, uh, are these people or are these animals or? People. Dan People, got it. All right. You'll do fine. Now, should I bring a gift or? You are a gift. Oh, you flatter me. I don't flatter anyone. I speak earnestly and in truth. Okay, we're we're getting in the weeds here. <laughs> <laughs> this is like a, a grumpy old crotchety fucking spirit guardian who's like, follow me. <laughs> Starts walking toward a large tree, and you see, standing on its hind legs, is about 15 to 20 feet tall. Takes its claws and starts raking the front of a tree to give you transportation via plants. Walk through, and you will be outside of Narfolk. It is south, but trust that you will find your way north. Don't mind taking the scenic route. Well, thank you for your hospitality. Um, here, he reaches into his pack and hands him a little bit of honey, a little clover honey. Sort of plops down, <laughs> like the big old bear arms kind of around and just sort of very messily like <laughs> licks it right out of your hand. No, no shame here. Uh, with that, as you make contact with this spirit guardian, you see as these tattoos and the pearlescent eyes begin to emit a bright light. I would like you to take any feet of your choice. As you are granted any feet of, any feet of your choice as you are bestowed a spirit guardian's boon. Oh, beautiful. I will sit on that. For the um, journey to come. I will oh, you you honor me. Um I'll go now, but um I'll be meet again. I know that you are as, Guardian, but surely you have a name, and if you do not have one, would you like one? I am Garm. Garm. I like that. It's a good name. Simple. One syllable. Easy to remember after so many years. Yeah, you know, you gotta keep it simple. One name, you know, it's about, you know, recognition. Please know that I recognize what you are doing for the sunflowers. I am sorry for what's befallen you and yours. All will be right. When the winter comes, but spring always comes right behind it. We endure. Yes, we do. Thank you for your hospitality. Mm. I have a long way to go, friend. And Garm. 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 I like that. I hope we meet again, friend. Venture forth. And you walk Bend through down. this portal created through the tree. It is tall enough for you, so you do not have okay, to bend good. over. Um, you do walk forward, uh, and we are going to transition over to Lazuli. Baby girl, you have been in Drukamesh for the last day. Okay. You've been following a man by the name of Bron Stonebridge. Uh, an individual of seeming importance to Viola. Um, you have not been given tasks that evoke any sort of physical action. You are to make sure that he gets to where he is supposed to get safely. You are supposed to ensure that he is comfortable. And you are supposed to ensure that he is safe. Everything has gone by with relative ease. Um, you do hear in your mind, you've done well, 
Vesuli. Mm, of course. Well, who else would you ask? Well, why else would you ask me? Well, to test your abilities. I know you are capable, but to know that you are willing, that brings more comfort. Who is this Ron Stonebridge to you? Stonebridge? Stonebridge? Stonebridge. Stonebridge. Well, Why have you sent me here, of all places? Because even the smallest pebbles make a large ripple in this man's future. Well, this man's future will happen because of a hag like myself, my predecessor. Follow me. As you see the old crone manifest in this green smoke, uh, the one that you've seen in dreams. Walk with me, if you will. You take the time to walk. The Unless you have any questions, Viola is relatively quiet. But I would like you to make an arcana check, please. Um, can I, before I leave, or can you just tell me more? I can make some, like, just what have I observed during the day about Braun? What does it look like? What are we doing? Uh, Where, what's this specific, Braun, like, Braun is an older human man. Uh, he, okay. he is balding with large mutton chops, um, the sort of black hair uh, in, into, you know, salt and pepper. Um, mm -hmm. He is very lowly in his standing within Drukamesh. He, he maintains a one person house uh, with his wife. Uh, he has two children who he does everything he can to uh, enrich and support and defend. Um, for all intents and purposes, this is a good man. Um, he is doing everything he can. Uh, right now, you know that he is a peddler. Uh, he sells shoes. He sells, he sells clothes. He sells all sorts of things. But as you venture forth, you see... You see a combat happening in front of you. A castle being sieged. This castle is protected uh, by a line of river and a large bridge over it. Um, you see as this castle is completely decimated. But the bridge... The bridge is being held strong by the man you have been defending for the last day to ensure that he gets to this moment in time, right here, where he fights alongside individuals and defends the bridge. You then get glimpses of the future gifted to you by Viola. Mm -hmm. This man is named Lord of this castle. In what you now know to be Ango Court. He becomes Lord and eventually he bears a lineage of heroes. But what was important was making sure that he got to this point in time today. Now, this is just a militiaman, not somebody who stands strong in any sort of confident military uh, station, but he does now. He is the Lord of Ango Court and one of the ruling families of Drukamesh. And this happened. Because in desperation, the man made a plea to be greater, to provide more for his children and their children. And now, <laughs> one of them, 400 years from now, will wield a vestige, will slay a god, and will be powerful, will become a god themselves. You've ensured that divinity has made its way to mortals. And if you can do that for a stranger, imagine what you can do for your friends, your coven.
<laughs> what are you suggesting? I am suggesting that I will call on you in times of need, and you will see what we can be together, and you will see what you can do as my predecessor. And on this bridge, he made a pact with you, a hag, or Oh, he made a pact far before. But this was the moment with, where that pact came to fruition. With what? What kind of pact? He gave something up. Memories like of more. his family that he... Information, please. Memories of his parents. Parents that did not treat him well. Parents that abandoned him. Then returned to his life only to ask for money that he did not have. So, he very selflessly gave me those memories. And I, much like the Whitmores, gave him stake in a kingdom. Much like the Whitmores, you say? Yes. The pact where the, the Whitmores got their rightful land back from the Revardines, that is my doing. It was their land by right. Your friend Echinacea was right about that, but they never would have received it fairly without me. Hello, Lyra. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and we've talked about suspecting, um, you're uh, all, yeah. Hey, if you, if you suspect someone, that's up to you, babe. Yeah. Cause we, we've talked about thinking that this, um, it's Elizabeth. Yep. Lizzie. Lizzie. So are, you to, are you to confirm then, then potentially a whit more than which we know carries pact with you still? One of them does, yes. But that pact is private and I will not speak on it. I've... I do not know if I appreciate the results of that pact. You wish the Whitmores would have been displaced. That's not what I said. Then what is there to be displeased about? The fact that <laughs> mm, someone that I deeply care about. Sorry, Lyra's <laughs> going ape shit right now. <laughs> the dog is. I can kick them both out if they get. Oh, you're much. fine. Um, I mean, whatever. It's just testing testing my acting skills. <laughs> <laughs> um, huh? Hmm. One second. No, you're fine. Again. You're fine. Come here, child. We gotta we gotta kick the kids out of the bedroom. You know, they're being a little <laughs> rambunctious. Um Come here. you know, also for everybody, that what what Viola just talked about was a connection to the last campaign played in this in this world. Int save uh to the to the characters uh, were descendants of Bronze Stonebridge. There's a war going on on Lou's end, but we are not privy to. <laughs> I want to be there for it, you know? Ben was like, chase me, chase me, chase me, Mom. He, he's kind of being so a pick fun. me right now. <laughs> um, okay. All right. All right, Lazuli is very sus. Um, Makes sense. <laughs> what? Bitch is being very suspicious. And had I actually protected this uh, brawn from anything? Like, was there any? Uh, there was an attempted robbery. Um, okay. There was, so there were things that you intervened in. Um, mm -hmm. There were there would have been a trampling via um, carriage if you did not like push him out of the way. Um, so mm -hmm. there were things, but it was intervening with what seemed like fate. Mm -hmm. You were an agent of ensuring that that fate did not come to pass. To ensure that the time where Bronze Stonebridge defended this piece of land in Ango Court, that that's what your purpose was. Mm -hmm. Hmm. 
don't think I have my shit. I don't think... I like the terms of your arrangement. What arrangement? That you were suggesting. That I be at your beck and call. Then you will not receive my power anymore and your friends will die because of it. Are you not willing to negotiate? Are you willing to break your pact with me? That is not wise. Hmm. I didn't realize that you were so cut and dry with these types of things. Well, I'm not the Viola you knew. How I... so? Well, you and yours killed her. Right. Made it so that I took her place. So. Insight check? <laughs> please. Bitch. <laughs> Beat. <laughs> Twelve, you said? What she's saying is true. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Um, But there is this... With the Twelve, uh, you're able to glean this oozing sense of confidence. Okay. So... You completed your work, and I will pay you for that. In what you crave, power. Do you want said power, or would you like to go home empty-handed? That choice is yours. Is it just empty-handed, or empty-handed and without application? Because if I do accept that reward... It seems, it seems any option, I still have strings attached, correct? You made a pact. That's how it works. You made that pact free of your own will. Hmm. And if I didn't fulfill all of the requirements of that pact in a I... certain amount of time, I would lose my powers and go on my merry way. That would be the beginning of it, yes. Yes, and I have not fulfilled all of those things. I am merely in the talking stages with you, you see? <laughs> <laughs> You've garnered two benefits from this pact already, and you still have time to gain a third. So, respectfully, you are already mm -hmm. in it with me. And you are. You seem to be forgetting where the power lies in this dynamic. It is not with you. Not yet, but it can. Then why would you want to make a deal with me? There's something that you want from me, right? I want to see how you grow, but if you're willing to be stagnant... That's up to you. I will move on to somebody who wishes to grow. Hmm. I don't think stagnant is the word. I'm more intentional with the direction in which I move. Hmm. Well, like I said, if you want time to think about this, I will send you home and you will not garner any benefit from your time here in Drukamesh. I wouldn't hmm. want to sway your opinion. I would like to know which my reward would be. Oh, would you know? Of course. It is a feat of your choice. Hmm. Above table. An expansion of your abilities. In whatever direction you see the most useful. Which I don't gain any benefit from. Because you killed the Viola before me. Which means that there is a likely chance that you will come to me with said abilities. So, I do believe you already have the upper learning hand about here. what a death hack is. The killing part isn't necessarily a bad thing, right? Death begets more death. Does it not make you stronger? Makes me stronger, makes me different. Hmm. Do you different. want the benefit or not? Your friends need you now. And if I take it, what will that require of me? The next time I need something, I will ask if you are willing to help. As I see it, that's already an offer that is currently standing, as I am here now. Then you have the opportunity for more benefits. It is a working arrangement. That is what it is. That's what it has and been. And yet if I wish to nullify these terms, you threaten my friends? Uh, no, you would threaten your friends because you would sacrifice the abilities that you have already used to defend them. Oh, I see. You see, the way you phrased it, it seemed like you were going to go after them if I left you. 
I wouldn't have to. The world will do that of its own volition. Mm. And you will be helpless to stop it. I don't think I like the way that you talk about me. I don't think you like the way you look at yourself. And that is not my fault. You. Bye. Mm. <laughs> so he's like, fucking a bitch. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Lizzie's a bitch. <laughs> no, no Did no. I just confirm it? Absolutely. <laughs> but that's above table. Y'all can't do shit with that in game. Um, all right. So, Lizuli, a question for me to you. Are you yes. taking a benefit from this? No. Okay. All right. She was not being nice to me. You at least have to stroke my ego. <laughs> Not, not call out my insecurities to my fucking face, dude. Yeah. Okay. Be you, better at manipulating. You. She's pretty good. <laughs> she's pretty good. Mm. Um. All right. You. Uh. You feel as this this magic swirls around you. Roll me a d one hundred, please. Hey yo. One sec. Roll. E one hundred. You're in Google right now. Well, D one hundred. Go, fifty two. Okay. Uh, since she is not helping you get back, you had to flex cast for this. Fifty two. Damn. We. Okay. I'm traveling. <laughs> It's like the, uh, that's so Raven, like, Okay, effect. well, this one's not bad. That's unfortunate. Um, <laughs> uh, you smell, what? you smell like cinnamon. Aw, cute. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> All right. Look, even when I try to be mean, I can't do it. All right. But you, <laughs> you land back in the humble abode, uh, where Uldiel, Lapis are just sort of, Lazuli's also wearing like a secretary cosplay, basically. <laughs> so that's what she, so she's got like her hair up in a bun and like a pencil skirt, like. Hello? Yeah. <clears throat> I have returned. Yes. We see. What Are have you... I missed? And this is where we transfer over. <laughs> <laughs> Zio and Echinacea. <laughs> You two are standing face to face between Isterus and Halitus. Right now, both in their humanoid form. I need both of you to give me a medicine check on Isterus. With disadvantage. With disadvantage because you guys have a point of exhaustion. Medicine. <laughs> Squad! <laughs> it's still good. Um, 23. 23? Uh... That's a nat one. Damn, babe. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. With a 23, Istris looks stronger. He looks far more put together. He looks capable. He is not depending on his staff to stand. It is now a decoration. How does... Halaitis look terrified. Like he's been like he is about to be betrayed. How much distance is between all of us? You guys are standing are in and I will double check with you guys. Are you standing in between them? Uh there is about forty five feet between Istris and Halaitis. You guys about dead center. Um Istris sort of leans forward, uh, pulls his hood down for the first time. What you see are two fully formed bark-like antlers that curl to the back of his head. Mossy green hair that is now very intentionally slicked back. And you see a sleek, uh, like sylvan sort of face. Sharp elven features uh, with very intentional eyes. Bright yellow irises uh, with, with small accents of bark and leaf just sort of decorating the cheeks now what is it you've called us here for 
Zio. I know that Zio cannot cannot take in that strength based on medicine, but having known yes. Istris for as long. Mm-hmm. It's it, visible to see that there is a fucking difference here. Like, no yeah. one required. But the, the medicine was to see just, like, physically he is. Yeah. You look... well. I am well. Um, Zeo looks between Asterius and then back at Halitis. Uh, uh, like, described, Halitis looks Just... terrified. Like he is about to be betrayed. But he does sort of... What, what, what did you call us here for? I just, I would like some questions answered. Hear a vocal scoff from Istris. What makes you think you have the right to summon me to answer your questions? If you do, then you'll never have to see me again. I doubt that. Fine, my interest is piqued. What about you, Elitis? I want to support Zeo in any way I can. If you have questions, Please, please ask them. Um, Zio first turns to Isteris. Mm hmm Did you know what would happen to me? In what the, way? The end that befells every avatar. Oh, you're talking about what's happening to Kaletra's avatar. Would it have happened to me? No. Would I have... Because you are better than him. Then you are did... more capable of wielding it, given your Vakron heritage. Did you know when you found me, then? Did I know? Yes. Absolutely. I am not Kaletra. I would not have picked a wielder who was not able to handle the weight. You were not ready to hear that information. Halitus, did you know that I was Vakron when you spoke to me? Yes, and when we talked the first time, I, I told you. I told you as soon as we had a conversation. When I introduced myself to you, um, uh, there is a fear that is affecting the atmosphere around you. The smell of rain, uh, petrichor, becomes quite strong in the area. Oleander... You come out of a tree uh, some 300 feet away, and you're able to see this. You're able to feel the difference in the energy. As soon you, as I knew, I told you. As soon as you knew, but the first time we spoke was when that creature, the... I don't remember its name. The Brackish Trudge, yes, I recall. I said that we could have a conversation. I wasn't just going to dump life-altering information on you when you didn't even know my name for sure. But you knew. That's all I need to know. I'm not... Of, co of course I knew. I'm the, I'm the one that told you, yes. I just wanted to confirm that prior to you telling me that, you had known that it wasn't just something that was revealed to you 
later on. I just wanted to confirm that. I don't think there's anything wrong in me wanting to confirm that. Is there? I just, uh, it seemed like a pretty fair confirmation. I, I, I'm not sure why it, it was in question to begin with. I, yes, I, I knew, but I kind of looks over at Estrus across the field. I am jumping back into the world for the first time since he killed me. You were the first person I went to? So if this is a concern of me keeping things from you, um, he can't help but look between you and Istris. This has happened before. And the last time this happened, he died. Um. Halitus? Yes. Don't be scared. I don't know how not to be scared right now. Then look at me. I. Ask your other questions, Zio. Zio's not going to look away from Halitus. Okay. Um, and speak to Istris. Was I the only one, then? Were there any lives before mine? Are you, you're asking this to Istris? Mm, to Istris. Did you attempt it? Not before, but since, yes. I can see, then. And are they like me? Foolish? No. Understanding of what the goal is? Yes. But can they wield it like me? Oh, yes. Yes, they can. As I told you, I do not pick avatars that cannot bear the weight or so I thought before I met you. Now, why do you seek it? Why do you still hunt this thing? You seem to lament so much. Zeo looks away from Halitus and turns back around to Istris. Because I cared about you. Because I... You might not have shared that with me, but I loved you. You brought me peace and comfort when I was alone. And I know deep down, I know deep down you never saw that. And I had hope. The words I said were true. I was alone. And I found solace in our companionship. But I will not let my justice dance in the hands of foolish children. This it's sun true. wall. No. Because the way I see it, you are just like me. You seek these orbs for power, for power's sake. When you have them all, what will you do other than use it? What will you do other than inv invoke action in the way that you see fit? Find solutions. Again, that is what the I preservation, mean. the preservation of life, shouldn't just be standing in opposition to the things that hurt us. 
It is finding solutions. And you don't want that. Your solution is death and it's, destruction. It's taking the current away from people who should not have wielded it to begin with. His eyes train onto Halitus. Then we find the solutions. We? You cut me out. You left me. Let us not rewrite history. You decided that I was not worthy of your help. I did not. That my was help, your choice. My help at the expense of my morals and my soul destroyed. They deserve to die for what they've done, for what they've taken from us. From me. I will not stand by. As my creation. Is used. To pervert the lives. Of the people of this plane. What is his name? Casimir. In pain. Because my power. Was pumped. Into his body. Wit is melting from the inside out because he cannot bear it. I will take it away from those who have it. We find solutions. We find solutions. I intend to heal that darkness so that the chaos can live in harmony with nature. The Did balance of life in that should be a natural process, not a burden, and not a cage. The expectations that you have set in death is selfish and cruel, and it twists you, and it has killed you on the inside. What you fail to remember, boy, is that I am nature. The earth beneath your feet as it quakes. That is my footsteps. The wind that graces your face is Halitus flapping his wings. The sea becoming a torrent is Glacia swimming from point A to point B. The warmth that emits from your mother's heart is Kaletra turning in her sleep. We are nature. And nature is cruel. But nature is balanced. What is balanced? You, nature is balanced. You don't intend to balance it. You intend to destroy for your own pettiness. Earthquakes destroy. For Tsunamis. your own gain. Tsunamis, do what does the wild mother do when tsunamis ruin fleets? That when is nature. That is the current. That is the chaos. That isn't a man wanting to do things for himself. I... That isn't a man wanting to destroy people who don't deserve it. Everyone who don't deserve it. There are people who need to answer for what they've done to you, but that is not a solution. Death is not a solution. You are selfish and you are, don't even see it before you. You killed your husband for it. What is wrong? What is wrong with wanting to change things, to fix it, to let chaos rule how it's supposed to, not for the gain of somebody, but for the balance of the world and the balance of nature. Puts his hand up in the air. Did you not cause the trauma of Declan Alcott to be faced to him, and then plant your sister in his lap and send him to Drew Kamesh? It seems as if you are dictating your autobiography to me. And we I are intend one to in the find same. So I intend to find solutions to do better. When you do, I will find mine. No, you won't. Is that all your questions?
I can't stop you. You are learning. But, he but you can. will see. You will see. May I do a thing? Sure. As they've been talking, Echinacea has been inching closer to Halitus. Okay. And they're waiting. Okay. He, it is almost as if, and Zio, you see this too. It's like looking at Echinacea in a mirror. He is folded into himself. He is fearful, anxious, and unsure of what to do next. I didn't, Angie, was there anything else that you wanted to say here? You will see. Istris begins to shift. His form taking on that of a large moss and oak covered stag. As he just I'm lunges not toward Halitus. And I'm going to flex cast Dimension oh. Door and I'm going to take Halitus 500 feet away. Absolutely Fle fucking not. Give me a moment. Flex because if this it? is. Do I see any of this? You see this. You see this 100%. Oh. So oh. I'm going to say um, Echinacea's Dimension Dooring. Uh, Zeo, you're prepping a thing. Ollie, what uh, are you doing in response to this as well? Do I have any idea of what is going on? You uh, you understand that these are, are beings of the Union of the Tranquil. These are primordial beings that have joined together from the elemental planes of air, water, earth, and fire. Uh, this is Istris, the progenitor of earth, and uh, Halitus, the progenitor of air. Um, you know, I will say that you know that they helped tend to this world in its creation uh, and acted like gardeners to Aosha's growth. Um, so there is reverence, but a lot of fear uh, in regards to them uh, that you've received from Ilthun, the Wild Mother, as they are seemingly, a they're acting to destroy the, sur the source of magic that they've brought to Aosha. Um, Zeo is <sighs> going to yell out, no, and stand in front of this creature um, and just yell out, I'm not scared of you, and let out in that moment a thunder wave. I know as thunder wave? myself, as Angie the player, I know that is not strong enough to possibly stop this. Um, You're taking a stand but here. I, Zio is taking a, a visible stance in between Halitus and Echinacea. Um, Okay. Doesn't know that Echinacea Absolutely. has moved them away. Yep. But um, so you cast Thunderwave at third level. What do you need from me? Is it a saving throw? Um, give me a second. Actually, just he'll if there is a saving throw, he'll use a legendary resistance to just ignore it. Um, it is. Um, on a third level. It's a four d eight. So I'm assuming is that's... it roll to hit. Um, on a failed save, a creature takes two okay. d eight. Um, takes so he'll take he'll still take damage. So go ahead and roll two d eight. But Zio is like if if Zio ends up ragdolling out of there, that's uh -huh. like that doesn't matter. Zio Absolutely. is one hundred percent. Um, and then Echinacea, your dimension during Halitus away. They're at Halitus's arm, and as soon as Istris begins transforming, not even. As he lunges, there is a tug up on his sleeve, and these two... Echinacea looks up at an entity who is more powerful than time, who is just as afraid as they always feel, and there's a strange comfort in that. Yeah. They smile and they say, Not like this! And a whirl of little red birds fly around their feet, and this red portal opens below them, okay. and then they fly, they land 500 feet away. 500 feet away, you transform, uh, or you see as, as Istris begins, or Politus begins to transform into his four-winged uh, bird form, and just sort of looks, I, I can get him out of here. This will decimate Norfolk, and we can't have that. Thank you. Little Phoenix. Um, I hit for seven with the Thunder okay. Wave. 
Um, and I think Zio is going, it's not possible, I don't think it's possible, but Zio is quite literally trying to use their body as a way to just like, okay, stop, yeah, like, um, okay, like a shield, like a, a standing front. Perfect. I want to check in on what Ollie is doing. Um, how far away am I? I would you have been inching closer as this engagement is happening? Yeah, I'm I'll busy. say that you're probably about fifty feet away at this point. Fifty feet away. I'm um, seeing as I see this. Um, the I see him changing. Yes, I will instinctively. Um, seeing that they're about to attack this small blue man. Yep. Um, we'll uh, cast um. Uh, what do you call it? Shield of Faith. Okay. On Zio. What does your Shield so of Zio, Faith you have look a like? Plus two to AC. Um, shield of Faith. Um, Oleander will take his oaken arm and stick it into the ground. Um, and roots will kind of wind their way towards Zio and cover Zio in like bark like armor. Zio, you feel as this bark takes over your body, <laughs> this kind and um, abjurative magic takes over your form as your physicality is <laughs> emboldened by a stranger. And um, what does that make your AC right now, Zio? Uh, how much? Plus two. Plus, shield yeah. it, plus two? It's uh, 18. Okay, this is a 26 to hit. Yeah. <laughs> Zio, you're going to take 4d12 bludgeoning damage uh, as you take, Jesus Christ, uh, 24 points as this. And this is a huge creature. So y you take as it's not even like, you know, mm -hmm. the antlers or the horns at this point. It is just the base of the snout. As it slams into your body, this bit of protection from uh, this armor that that overtakes you, but unfortunately, it's not enough. As you're blasted back about fifteen feet, um, and in that, uh, all of you see um, Echinacea as uh, Halitus flies above Zeo. You look upwards to see this bright white, blue, and gray bird, uh, this Vacron flying above as he dives down, uh, wrapping his wings around Istris and no. teleporting away. No. And that is where we're going to take our first break. The CEO just yells. Yeah, yeah. All right. Hey, Tali, thanks for being here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know what's going on, but boy, what a time. What a time. Um, we're going to be back in about 10 minutes, so we will see you guys then. Thank you to all these players. We got a pretty intense start to the session, uh, but we will see you guys shortly. Bye bye. Bye.
Megan, see and hear you. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Chapter 35 of Known Realms Tell Lash with special guest. That's Barnaby. Everybody give them a little kiss on the forehead. And also, everybody lean over to the next frame over and give Angie a big old kiss on the forehead. All right. As we left off, um, Zio, you're on the ground. Uh, Echinacea, you had just uh, dimension doored. Halitus away, who has teleported both himself and Isteris out of the area. I need both of you, Ollie included, as well as Kaylin and Monroe. K Monroe <laughs> is running up fully strapped right now. <laughs> it's like, God, he, the thing is, he stands over you, Zio, and just leans back. Are you good soldier? And like starts aiming up toward the air. Like this is, this is full muscle memory happening this is not like this um, is this is a fight response it's uh, uh, halitis and isteris are completely gone 
I was going to say, what's what's the the perception check? Oh, perception and, check. And disadvantage for echinacea and uh, zero because exhaustion. Yeah. I'm not bad. Um, 21. Okay. 21 and 5. <laughs> echinacea, you're like, ah! 18. <laughs> 18. Zeo and Oleander, you see as through the sky, this cloud appears and <laughs> bursts into a four-winged Vacron Halitus. Oh. As he bursts back through oh, the I sky and <gasps> never mind. <laughs> and flies away. Um, content warning just for some injuries. Um, he has a couple wounds on his chest. Um, he has a clip on his wing. Uh, and there's a, a bit of, of injury to his face. Um, but he sort of transforms into his human state and just sort of like falls to the ground unconscious next to Yuzio. But he is alive. Oh, hold on. Oh, God, I can't hear anybody. Give me one second. I think my shit fucked up for a second. Oh. Discord, why are you such a bitch? Him, no, there we go. I can see you guys now. Zio um, is crawling on hands and knees. We're like, no, 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 no. And then just goes over to um, Halitus. Um, you can't do anything. Um, a, uh, can't heal I'm, anything. I'm okay. I'm okay. I just. I'm so... And then Zio just <laughs> presses their wizard breath. Their their head yeah. um, on Halitus's chest and says, I can't do anything. I can't protect anybody. <sighs> My decisions and everything I do gets everyone hurt and killed. Vaughn's family killed. Carcoon's family killed. My sister Declan. Everybody. I can't do anything right. Why can't I protect people? Why can't I change his mind? I just want to be able... <sighs> I want to be able to do good and fix things, and I can't do any of it. You can't fix someone who doesn't think they're broken. I spent hundreds, no, thousands of years with Isteris. It has always been, excuse my pun, Bullheaded. That's not your fault. You got hurt because of me. Vaughn's family got hurt because of me. I got hurt because of Isteris. Because he moved. He is in control of his actions, not you. You need to learn that people make choices and that has nothing to do with you. I put you in danger. I wish you would have told me that uh, Istris was going to be present. I Maybe did. I could have prepared a little better. I'm sorry. Sio, he killed me. <laughs> I've never felt fear like that. He's in a place where it's going to take him a minute to get out because he can't fly. But he'll be, he'll live. He's like a cockroach. <laughs> I don't... I keep making promises to people that I can't Promises. Keep. Promises don't end because you can't fulfill them. You work to fulfill them. You're gonna stumble. You're gonna fall. And you're gonna make mistakes. Those promises aren't gone. See you. They're not. The only person you're failing is yourself. Are you okay? Oh. That was a stupid question. I'm not. I'm not okay. 
I, I know that you're saying that... I understand what you're saying, but this is exactly what Vaughn is trying to teach me. And listen to Vaughn, too. If you need to learn, you need to listen to the people teaching you. Isters is dangerous. And he's dangerous because he's been hurt. And he's found a solution. That solution just results in the death of a lot of people. Which neither of us want. I love this world. I love all of you. That's why we cultivated this garden so people like you could walk it. At least that's why I did it. Looks over to, I imagine, Echinacea and Oleander are closing in. As uh, Oleander's walking closer, he whispers under his voice and several monarch butterflies fly out of his arm. Um, and go to Zeo, um, and I'm casting Healing Word. Okay. Um, and that heals you for eight. Nice. As I kind of converge on uh, Akinasia, as I'm assuming we're kind of walking foot in foot. Yeah. Akinasia's running, which is why they're keeping up with you. Um, and I think they, they <laughs> a lot has happened. Just like orienting this little guy is running from 500 feet away. They see their friend on the ground. They see Hylitis on the ground. They see Kaylin and Monroe, Monroe. They don't know if they're okay. And they see a stranger. So they run up beside the stranger and they go, Hello! 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 Oh. And then... Uh, oh, I, oh, oh. Oh. Uh, I was going to say, Kaylin um, casts Healing Word at, or, or Cure Wounds at, at second level as well. So, uh, Echinacea, if you're healing, I'll let you do that first. Yeah. Um, they As they say hello and see um, Oleander cast Healing Word, there's just this look of gratitude from three feet below you, because Echinacea's five feet tall. Um, oh. And they say, thank you so much. And they um, snap, and a halo of seven birds spirals for a second around their head. And then the seven disperse between Halitus and Zeo. Um, four are going to Zeo, and three are going to Halitus. So Zeo, you heal... Math. Four, five, six, seven. You're gay, you seven. can't do that math. I can't do that math. Um, no, sorry. Is it four? Uh, eight, nine. Heal nine points and then get four temp HP. Halitus heals 11 and then gains three temp HP. Okay. Um, Kalen drops to his knees, uh, puts both of his hands uh, on your chest uh, and cast Cure Wounds. Um, you heal Zeo for an additional... Um, how how much was Echinacea's? At nine with three temp nine. HP. Four. Four temp four HP. Dice. Um, heal. Four temp. Okay. And then you'll get 12 points of healing from Kaylin. Okay. I'm at full now. Ooh, okay. That's not what I meant to do. Um, Halita sort of sits up. Plus you have them. Yeah. Zio looks back at um, Kaylin and Echinacea and even looks over at Monroe. Put your put your gun down. I didn't know if we were going to need it. I uh, <laughs> puts it back. He's like, ah. Thank you. You're welcome. And then Zio looks over at um, Oleander. This individual bark on one on one arm. Yeah. And then there's this moment of just like Are you Are you his then? Are you the one? Are uh, you the new one? Oh. Um I don't know what you mean, but <laughs> I am already spoken for. Um I just, <laughs> Uh, the Wild Mother has sent me. Um, I don't know where or... Oh, I'm sorry. Hi, my name's Oleander. Uh, my friends call me Ollie. And we've met, so 
we're friends, you can call me Ollie. And reaches out a hand to, like to offer a handshake with his untree with his unbarked arm. It's normal hand. <laughs> yeah, it's normal hand. <laughs> um, Zio looks at it very like. Zio's never shied away from making friends or meeting new people, and that and yet in this moment, um, Zio still takes the hand, but is very cautious about it uncharacteristically cautious. No worries. Are you well? I took quite a hit there, friend. I'm, I'm better because of my my friends. Oh. You are. Um. Is, uh, I, I hate to be an, an intruder here, but wh who are you and what is going on? I'm Zio Moreno. Zio Moreno. And you're not... You're not... Istris, then. You said you're spoken for by the Wild Mother. I am. I am a spirit tender. A, a seed banker. If you will. Zeal looks over at Echinacea. It, it's... Thank you for healing my friend, Ollie. That... I hold out a hand for a handshake as well. Um, reaches out, uh, Oleander. My friends call me Ollie. We've met, so now we are friends. You can call me Ollie. So you were sent here, Ollie? I was. The wind called me here, and then a bear sent me through a tree. <laughs> and that's my morning. It's a very confusing morning. You were taking it in stride. Uh, uh. It is best to take these things in stride. I didn't catch your name, um, friend. I'm so sorry. I'm Echinacea. Oh, like the flower. Health. Healing. It's a pleasure to meet you, little flower. It's a pleasure to meet you, uh, giant oak. <laughs> hmm. Um, you see the the drowish uh, cleric paladin in front of Zeo stands. Uh, uh, Kaylin, friend, pleasure to meet you. Sibling Kaylin, nice to meet you. <sighs> pleasure to meet you too, Ollie. Um, thank you for your help. Of course. Uh, the a human man sort of kind of in more modern uh, uh, attire an artificer sort of Monroe uh, th thank you for your help oh you... a brother of iron hello Monroe you gave your real name seemed appropriate in this point in time That's good. Oh, are we giving fake names? Uh, Sometimes I don't they have one. fake names, but not right now. Okay, I'll get it later. It's it's Frederick. <laughs> uh, Frederick, got it. It's a, it's a bad fake like, name, but all right. Uh, you and, know. And this is Istris. No, sorry, this is Hopitas. <laughs> <Hilitis. laughs> this, this man, uh, uh, this black man with white dreads in kind of like this white. Uh, armor and and blue robes underneath just goes. I'm Elitis. <laughs> <laughs> You're one of Vilthoons, you... aren't you? I am. Uh, how is she? Uh, she is well. She sends tidings to all those who walk the earth. She's very lovely. If she I is. weren't gay, I'd have a crush. <laughs> Well, you know, yes. beauty can be admired, regardless I, uh, of who you lay. I absolutely adore it. Kind of sits up. Do you, do you need a hand? You seem to be struggling there, friend. I need to ensure that Istris doesn't come back. You can't do that if you can't stand. Here. Oh, good thing I can fly. Oh. He sort of puts his hand... Uh, on himself as he casts heal on himself. <sighs> wow. 
wound suffusing, uh, the white light of the sun washing over him for but a moment. Zio, I will protect you. And I will protect yours. Not because you owe me anything, not because we have a pact, but because it is the right thing to do. And I want to see you grow. I'm sorry I didn't speak with you. You're young. You're learning. Next time you want to have a co-parent meeting with Istris, let me know beforehand. I don't think he'll want to talk to me. So... I wouldn't put it past him. But... I'll take to the skies and I'll keep you safe. Can I ask you to help me with one thing? What? Maybe you can try and find the name of his new avatar. I'll see what I can do. I think it's going to be best if we prepare ourselves. Understand. I'll, uh, I'll see what I can find. Sort of stands, uh, helps you up, Zio. Uh, goes to shake your hand, Oleander. Thank you, Seedbearer. You're most welcome. Flock to fly with. I get it now. Yes. Uh, shakes Kaylin and Monroe's hands and then uh, walks to you, Echinacea. Thank you for your quick thinking. I was frozen and very scared. <laughs> Knowing that this man had to cope with seeing the person who killed him unexpectedly and is still treating us with such kindness, Echinacea reaches out and they summon their phoenix feather as they shake his hand. He looks at it with reverence. I helped make the first phoenix, you know. So I've been told. Looks between you and Zio. They're some of my favorites. Thank you for what you have made. Thank you for honoring them. He kind of holds the feather. Kisses it. Tucks it behind your ear. I'll be around. And if you need me, just call. Halitis, do you think though there could ever be a chance to bring everyone together? I don't believe in absolutes, so I'm willing to fight for it, and I'm more than willing to hope for it. But that takes work, work that we all have to put in, and I mean all of us. You can't change its stress by yourself. It took me a thousand years to realize that. But maybe you can open his eyes in a ways in a way that I never could. I was too close. I loved him and he loved me. But my job is now to protect my flock. Yeah. I'll be around runs, transforms, and kind of spins in this spiral and dissipates into cloud. Wow. What a Monday. <laughs> it is Monday. actually Friday the 3rd of Markinoff. It's Friday. Apologies. What a Friday. It's, been, what a Friday. It's, it's been another trying Friday, gamers. Truly. <laughs> really? It's trying Friday. Um, I that, wish it was... I wish it was... On day, uh, Dwy day. On day. <laughs> um, okay. What? 
what's the goal here? Are you guys kind of keeping this conversation here, or are you aiming to go back to the abode? You'll have gotten a message from Lapis. The Zulis returned. <laughs> I think um, the moment that Halitas leaves, um, Zio and Zio's knees give out, and just exhaustion takes over. Yeah. Um, if you give me a few minutes, Zio, I can I can make something to help you get back. I'm just very sleepy. I can carry you if you'd like. I'm quite warm. Can you? Uh, yeah. Zio extends their arms out to to Ollie. Yes. Here we go. <laughs> Put you like on his back. All right. Comfy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Don't mind the smell and don't touch the the moss on the back. I'm trying. Zio to... immediately falls asleep. Okay. Oh. So it's just Ollie, Echinacea, Kaylin, and Monroe. Um. Monroe just sort of looks. Maybe we should head back. It might be smart. You okay? I... We just have more to contend with. We will. We will. Are you okay? We... They... He pulled his gun, right? That seemed like a, like a post-traumatic his, response. His hands are still shaking. In one of them, he has the train puzzle that he is just like one-handed fiddling with, like just trying to anchor himself to something. Echinacea will link an arm with Monroe, pull out the puzzle that he gave them, link an arm with Kaylin. And look up to Oleander and say, Well, if you're meant to, if Ilthun has sent you to, um, be our flock, then, um, would you like a, to, to meet the nest? Definitively. One, one second. Um, shakes his staff against the ground, um, and you feel a lightness to you. Pa cast pass without a trace. Okay. Alrighty. Perfect. Um, the three of you are going to all get a point of inspiration and Tali for you, inspiration stacks in my games. So you can have up to three. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, you guys begin to venture forth back into the city. Um, as you do, Echinacea, Kaylin, Oleander, give me, uh, well, Mon I mean, no, Monroe's kind of out of it. I think he's very much like struggling. So you guys all give me a perception check. Disadvantage. Oh. Uh, not bad, Kaylin. Oh my goodness, 15. Nice. That is uh, math. That, that is, is math. 28. 20, Jesus, Ooh. druids. Um, okay, you're able to hear... Um, you're now entering like the, the bright and bustling city of Norfolk. This is modern. You see trolleys, you see people standing on these tall mechanical horses, ferrying them to work. Um, with your perception check, you hear uh, the voice of one Clive Dew. I unfortunately have to announce that one Gale Umbridge had broken into our munitions depot last night, threatened my staff, and dismantled the vast majority of our operation. I, alongside the Griffin Knights of Norfolk, have put out a warrant for arrest for one Gail Umbridge. She is responsible for the actions that partook our great city of Norfolk last night. Defense is of the utmost importance, and we cannot do that if our operation is hindered by those of the elite. Now, why Gail has done this, I am unsure, but I have trusted resources that inform me that she is the one responsible. If you see Gail Umbridge, please report it to me, my offices, or uh, the public works of Norfolk. Thank you, and good day. So, what uh, you guys are gonna hear is that you got off scot-fucking-free. 
That illusion? Clutch. Kanisha looks at Kaylin, who like, took the He took the brunt of that devil's attack. Uh-huh. And so they know. And Zeo gave them Echinacea's name, so Echinacea knows that the devil decided not to out them. Why do you think she did that? There's a smile across Kaylin's face. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> that's funny. Um, it seemed like she couldn't leave. Maybe she needs help. And maybe she saw us as people that could help. Then why did she do that to you? Because there is a black scar mm -hmm. across his throat now, correct? Yeah. That makes no sense. We didn't stay to fight. Maybe that was a test. Testing our metal. But if she was an animal in a cage, she lashed out. And if she is held by some sort of bargain, some sort of pact with Clive Dew, then maybe she's obligated to defend the space. I don't know how to... I don't know how to fix that. We'll find a way to break a pact, but I don't think that's something we can do right now. Oleander? Ollie? Hmm, yes. How can I help? Have you ever... met a devil? Hmm. No. Hmm. I mean, I bet a couple rascals. But I don't know about a devil. <laughs> I've also met a couple rascals. Why do you ask? Well, that announcement that we just heard, um, that it, we. We may have done something that should have maybe gotten us in trouble. And a devil maybe knew about it, and the devil didn't rat us out. A boon, perhaps. Mm, devils aren't, I'm assuming, inherently evil. Perhaps a favor in the future. Uh, one back scratched for another. I will add that to the list. You said oh, that you... Owe you... Lots of favors. I'm sorry? Oh, do you owe lots of favors? No. I am helping oh. a lot of people get out of... Pacts. Oh. oh. Don't stretch yourself too thin, little flower. Um, so you said that you are a seat banker. What does, and a spirit tender, what does that mean? I represent the Sunflower Enclave. We collect flora from all over Aosha. I know you look Both familiar. Day. Ah, you recognize the symbol. I recognize the garb, yes. Uh, the Thortel Guild has worked in tandem with the Sunflower Enclave on a, a couple occasions, um, especially in areas affected by combat. Uh, conflict, uh, making sure that you were all given uh, seeds of the land to uh, protect and preserve. Yes, it's important that we hold on to every inch of it. All life deserves to grow. <laughs> but my task is to collect them, bank them, and as I walk through forests and walk through plains, I occasionally uh, run into a spirit or two. And I've been known to Share a conversation. That is incredible. Well, incredible. 
incredible. You're incredible yourself. Don't sell yourself short, little flower. <laughs> As you guys are walking back, I'm going to quick check in with Lazuli uh, to see what she is up to in the moment. Um, you're in the abode. Are you up to anything in particular? Um, she'll want to. Yeah, she basically asked what what did I miss and see what they the yeah uh, let you know that um, Prelude was made for Monroe, um, mm -hmm. that uh old yell tended to the weeds outside uh, um, that uh, Lapis had made dinner uh, not a lot that the group has particularly been informed of because everything that's happened happened today or last night went after the group had left uh, so you're aware that Echinacea and Zia went into Narfolk to talk to Bright Fury members um, the results of that you're unaware of but you knew you know that the group um, word given to Richter uh, before the group left that they were tackling the depot last night. So the they did. And have have we heard word? Are they alive? It, there was a devil that was communicated, right? Yes, yes, that was communicated. I uh, well, you have a way to speak with them, so if you I, want to yes. Think. That is my plan, but I wanted to see if... They have not come back. <laughs> Ahem. <laughs> Are you alive? Echinacea, you hear Lazuli. Like, Ahem! <laughs> Zia's past the full go. Lazuli, we are alive? Uh, yes. Uh, we are coming back. Good. Um. Uh. It is not... All bad. <laughs> uh, say more about that. <laughs> yes, say more about that. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine you just relay the events of what's transpired. Yeah. Well, I framed Gail Umbridge, so you have one less problem. Um, <laughs> we'll see about that. <laughs> well, she has one more problem. Um, Bam. Uh, uh, Isterus. Zia, Zia, you know how Zia wanted to talk to Istris? Uh-huh. And wanted to talk to Halaitis? Uh-huh. Well, he decided to at the same time, today. Oh. And it went oh. about as well as one might expect. But everyone is alive. So, it went well. Hmm. We're headed back to the abode now. Hi, Lazuli. I hope your trip went well. It didn't. Sorry. That's all right. <laughs> we'll talk about it soon. Do you need anything? Also, where's Victor? He he went home. Oh. He left you a note. Um, oh. The contents of which were saying that there were responsibilities in Lockhenge that could not sit unattended to. Um, he said that you were the sea. And he is the he are the rocks he is the rocks at shore, and he hopes that you two get to meet each other again soon. Wait, I found his note. Oh my. Okay. <laughs> are you okay? For now. <laughs> See you soon. Click. <laughs> okay. Well, jump back over to Oleander and Echinacea. Uh, another friend. Another bird for the flock. Another bird for the flock. Her name's Lazuli and she is my sister. Lazuli. Sister Lazuli. I don't like that. How much further? This Norfolk's a bit overwhelming. You guys are right near the, the entrance, so you're just turning the corner where the humble abode is. That's Have us. I gained any looks um, on yep. stumbling through the city? Absolutely. Um, you, there are people who uh, are just kind of not a lot of druidic individuals are, are kind of seen uh, in this uh, this far south in Drifton uh, north where it's a bit more of these these outposts in the duchies um, it, it's not as uncommon but like in, in a big city like this yeah absolutely um, you stick out like a green thumb 
awkwardly wave at every person that I see. People are like, "Hi there." I ain't crack. Ganesha takes their cue and starts waving at every single person they pass. This group is so autistic; it's fucking crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. All right, um, but you guys do enter the humble abode. Um, Oleander, you you reach this very beautiful and, and comfortable home. Um, if you want to see it, I'll just switch over to that map in the the roll twenty. Ooh, are are you guys in inside? Did you walk inside yet? Yep. As soon as um, <laughs> Ollie walks into the door, Lizzie's like, "Well, we may need to raise the ceilings." As soon as you say <laughs> it, the ceilings raise to a comfortable height for Oleander. Better, mm -hmm. I'd assume. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'm assuming you're Lazuli, yes. I am, and you are. Oh, Oleander. My friends call me Ollie. We've He's met like, so now. Oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. He does, he does his whole spiel. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. And she, like, goes to, like, kind of, like, do a, like, raise her hand to do it, but then she kind of flies, flutters up. She's like, oh, there we are. And can, <laughs> may, like, meet your eyes, because <laughs> she can fly. Uh, my back so. thanks you. Uh, Pleasure to make your acquaintance. <laughs> and then she kind of floats back down. My favorite thing right. is Lazuli forgetting she has wings. <laughs> also, you see, I'm, you see Zio passed out, like head just I'm leaning. Princess against. carrying you at this point. Oh, Princess carrying. Oh, um, just like curled up, curled up right against Ollie. Oh Dead to work. It was not. Oh. Um. Well. I do believe I've spurned our new Viet Viola. Uh, that's that's my news. Um, and potentially created a a lineage of divinity in the future. Yeah. That's about right. Girl boss moment. <laughs> Girl <laughs> try day. Whether in <laughs> intentionally or not so she just relays all the information yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, da, da, da. but i did not like how she was speaking with me and i don't think it's worth any power to be treated in such a manner so oh well boundaries are important right does lazuli still have hag rot yep i still have my powers my older yeah. power so yeah lazuli, yes I am concerned because you still have Hagrot manifested. Mm -hmm. I don't pretend to be as familiar with the condition as I should be. But I do worry that she possesses some sort of power over you still. Certainly. Um, I believe I have six months to fulfill all of my like parts of the contract. And until that is either completed or not, I will have it. Um, but if I choose not to pursue them, then they will eventually fade. But for now, I still have my powers and I still have Hagrot. I just am choosing not to further entangle myself with her at the moment. Speaking of which, I still have that vial. So we should have to deal with that at some point. <clears throat> Oleander, <laughs> for context. Oh, Ollie's like, I have no fucking idea what you're doing. Oleander, for context, we uh, we met a death hag, and um, our we friend... We didn't know it was a death hag yet. No, you did. Oh, you absolutely did. Oh, she, oh, did, she did tell us. You, she, um, you knew that. That was not hidden oh. from you at all. Scratch that side. Um, no. Okay. Um, holding zeal. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Do we want to put <laughs> you those rooms up here if you want? I, yes, we, we are all exhausted and we need to rest. Um, but, Ollie, what is it? What is your goal from the Wild Mother? Um, twofold. Um, to respond to whatever this is. 
uh, the conflict between the elements and spirits. And I am on a personal journey of my own, uh, a pilgrimage. I am to go north uh, and find the Illuminara flower to save my order. The Sunflower Enclave is currently in quarantine. And I am, unfortunately, its only survivor. I am so sorry. It is fine. Where, where north are you headed? Uh, one second. I gotta find the name. I have it right You're here. Okay. Uh, Ill 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 Bell. Uh, to the, um, yeah, the Bell Rose Medical Clinic. I hear rumors that there, what I seek is there. And if I can find it, I can save our order. Um. Oh, um, so, hello. Um, I didn't give you my oh, full hi name. Again. Hello again. Hi um, again. <laughs> my name is Echinacea Belrose, and I believe that is my facility, although I don't quite remember it. But we are also going to Illenbell. Well, no, it seems, little flower, your roots have entangled with mine. Uh, it's a pleasure to meet you, or to make your acquaintance. Uh, do you think you can offer assistance? I, You said you don't remember it, but it is yours. I'm assuming it's a dandelion on the wind. Um, a dandelion on the wind, yes. I will absolutely help you, and if I still have any power there, then I will see to it that the Luminara, Luminara? Luminara. flower is yours. Um, Even if you don't have any power, I still appreciate the help. Alec, you seem like you're going to say something. Uh, I was thinking, but never mind. Okay. Uh, kind of itch at my arm. Um, does it look as though it has gotten worse? It has grown um, worrisome over the last couple days. Um, the ends of your fingers are becoming more talon-like, um, and it is beginning to spread to your chest. This, um, this curse is taking hold. Yes. Let us put Sibley, Sibley and Zeo down somewhere. I'm... I don't want to disturb him, so I'm there, just going uh, to... Kalen, kind of I'll, I'll take him upstairs. Oh, here you go. You got him. Takes, Hold his head. <laughs> takes him. Just Kalen escorts um, Zio upstairs and tucks him into bed. Hmm. Zio, you can take a long rest. Oleander. Hmm. Did, I, did I see... Is Was that visible Noah's valid Tolly? Yes. Okay. Is this... Uh, have you have you always been in this state of being attuned to the trees? I wouldn't say this is an attunement so much as a, a promise. Um, in order to survive the thing that is inflicting my order, we have a defense mechanism known as Altair's Tear. Aurelius here. Yeah. Aurelius here, I'm sorry. Oh, no, you're good. Tier. You're good. Um, it grants me immunity from poisons and acid, but as well as several other abilities. But the downfall is, and kind of looks over at the arm, uh, to gain such power comes at a price. And has the affliction always reached the way it seems to be reaching here. And it's new. All this is new, which is exciting and terrifying, but mostly exciting. It is worrisome. If it is worrisome, then I would also offer my service in alleviating that worry in whatever way you see fit. As a promise, or you would view a curse or a pact, it is my honor to serve the uh, Undergarden. It is an honor to 
do what I can to help those plants and those trees grow. I will eventually become a treant in time. And I do not worry. The discomfort does hurt. And I do not worry about my fate. Lapis sort a, of... Oh, sorry, finish your thought. Oh, it's, it, is a, uh, it is an honor to continue to help the world grow. Lapis sort of speaks up. This the summer Aladrin tinkerer, the Lycan curse. Yes, yeah, familiar with it. I have studied um, diseases in my time, but uh, I understand. I apologize. Mm. No worries. Oh. Well. You all said that you also had packs. I'm assuming yours is uh, are not the same as mine. I mean, promises made, packs signed, deals made. Uh, look at us, a troop of people promising the world. I have no pact, but I am surrounded by people who do. So a promise keeper you are. To promise keepers and to promise kept. What of you, Lazuli? I noticed that on your neck. Ah, I see we share kinship. Oh, being afflicted. Hers are in the eyes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, I have golden pupils. Oh. <laughs> You're familiar with the affliction of Hagrot, um, a, a byproduct of making a deal or being a part of a lineage that has made deals with hags, um, while ability similar to the Lycan curse, um, abilities can be gained, but some things are lost or impeded. Um, you can tell that Lazuli is, is pallid and, and sort of physically dwindling. It seemed like a necessary or an interesting an interesting sacrifice for something that potentially could make me more helpful to, to my friends it doesn't seem to be serving me as much anymore and i am renegotiating my terms as much as i can are these people your friends and kind of with gestures to everyone around you. Family. And you simply being here is helpful. There is something to be said about traveling with friends. Loneliness is an affliction we all suffer from. To have a cure for that is a blessing in its own. I'm realizing the worth in merely my presence now as well. glad that we can be friends in this moment and cure ourselves of loneliness. Have you been lonely in your travels? Oh, yes. Which means when I find people, it's a treasure that I value. Well, you're welcome here. Mm, thank you. <laughs> and kind of looks around your house. Your home is beautiful. If you, if, oh, Akanisha, you do it. You do the honors. I usually take it. You do it. No, you. Together, let's. She, uh, uh, it's she not, offers it's not in hand. unison. Yeah, they hold hands and they say two completely different things. <laughs> 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 <Yeah>. <laughs> um, you can make a room if you want. <laughs> oh. Uh, okay. What do I do? And he holds out his hand. Do I just hold out my hand? And simply ask for it? or All you do is ask for precisely what you want. Ah, magic words I can get behind. Mm -hmm. May I please have a room? Something with a window. Where the sun shines. Preferably in the morning and the afternoon. I'd like to see the south. If you please. And a herb garden in the window. 
All right. You hear the shifting on the second floor. Um, Ollie, would you like to describe your room? Yes. It's real simple. There is a simple bed uh, decorated with flowers um, and various leaves of embroidered along the bed. Uh, there is um, a small desk that is fitting for, or a large desk fitting for a man of his size. There are not a lot of spaces that Oleander can stand up straight in. There is a huge bay window that opens completely and fully um, with a beautiful garden sort of sitting in a small nook. Um, several stacks of books along with a place to hang his coat and his robe and a small shrine to make his prayers to the Wild Mother as is appropriate. Um, oh, this is nice. Thank you. Thank you for gracing our home. Thank you for giving hospitality. In times such as these, it's needed. I find myself starting my journey greeting new life, not only in the form of a little seed blooming in the world, but finding a new place that I can go home. Welcome home. Thank you. Um... <clears throat> Zio, you're put to bed upstairs. Are you are you just out out? Yeah, that makes sense. Um Kaylin yeah. tucks you in. Uh just make sure that you have water next to you just whenever you wake up. Um he makes sure that there's yes. food presented for Lulu. Um she immediately kind of curls around you and just lays on your yeah. chest. Is Zio in their room or in, where they put you were in your room. Got it. Yeah. Kalen had Kalen. to climb up the ladder. <laughs> he did his best. He did his best. Um, he yeah. made it. He made it happen because uh, that man has to make it happen. Um, but always, you are. Yeah, he's a baby girl, derogatory and uh, endearing, lovingly uh, and affectionate. <laughs> um, but you are put to bed. Kalen does come downstairs and kind of looks at all of you guys, kind of talking and. What the left is there to handle in the city? Because if, if we need to start working towards Ellenville. I need to meet with Mordred Kane, but I need to go to sleep first, we can, I yes, think. Yes, rest. I'm, I'm not saying we do that right now, but I just wanted to get an itinerary. Sorry, I should wait till every... Good night. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> He kind of turns around. I think he's so frazzled and like he's still very much contending with the feelings that are kind of weighing down on him from yesterday. Um, but he just sort of takes off his armor. Oleander, would you like some shepherd's pie? No. Oh, yes. Um, did you make it? Lapis made it. And Lapis is like, I made it. Oh, are you a cook? <laughs> uh, not professionally, but uh, I could be. <laughs> Oh, well, He's... are we eating together, or am I eating alone? Kaylin's like, I'll eat some shepherd's pie. I'm very hungry. Mm. Um, let us eat together, friend. Um, and I'm gonna awkwardly sit, like, knees real high in a seat and scoop forward. <laughs> like you're on a squatty potty, <laughs> like the fucking... Yeah, like a squatty <laughs> potty. <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> Takes it in his hand and just sort of, like, doesn't even use a spoon, just, like, drinks out of it. Uh-huh. Oleander, the kitchen is the or the dining room is this garden space. If it makes him feel a little bit more home, oh, then he'll sit cross-legged in the floor. <laughs> all right. So, you guys all um, eat. Then it's rest time. Um, I will say uh, before. Bedtime is is upon us. Uh, Monroe just kind of walks toward uh, Lazuli and Echinacea. Well, if you guys are heading out, then maybe I should say my goodbyes for at least right now. Not goodbyes, but see you later. I have a bunk bed. Well, then we can say see you later. later. All right. Thank you. Do you, do you guys? You know? also stayed up all night. He's he's all adrenaline. And like no self-preservation at this point in time. Is it? Uh, yeah, no, I did. You're right. You're absolutely right. That's a thank you. 
That's a smart idea. I'm not going to pretend to know what you're feeling right now. But it seems like uh, calm is not the word for it. I saw a god yesterday. It's the first time that's ever happened. Um, and then I saw two uh, kind of gods. And uh, three gods in a 24-hour period is a lot for, for me. It's a lot to process. And... I don't know. When I thought you guys were in danger, I just went right into fight mode. I know. I'm sorry. I didn't anticipate that that was going to happen today, and I'm sorry that you were not made aware ahead of time. Nobody anticipated it. That's not your fault or responsibility. We all grappled the unexpected yesterday in the best of our ability. Thank you. I'll... I'm feeling calmer by the minute, but yeah, it's a, it's a lot. But I'll Good see bed. you. Let's go to bed. All right. Everybody, uh, I'll say Lazuli, since you've been kind of out and about, you're probably primed for a rest as well, uh, just because time differences and things like that. So we'll say everybody go ahead and take a long rest. Any points of exhaustion are gone. You guys are waking up in the evening, probably about 5 or 6 p.m., uh, just because we were up first thing in the morning and we've rested, but everybody is up. Um, uh, I will say, does everybody kind of converge downstairs? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, you see as Monroe is kind of packing a bag as he just sort of, well, you guys are going to be heading out sooner than later, so I know I still got things happening here in Norfolk, but thankful to have met all of you. Quest. See you soon, Fedrick. Thank you. See, oh, I'm glad you're okay. Me? Yeah, even you. You still irritate the fuck out of me, but yeah, even you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not okay. Yeah, I know. And that's okay. Monroe wears a suit, right? Uh, he, yeah, yeah. Or like a suitish, like, but there's yeah. some kind of like little pocket, some yes. shit on his chest. Correct. It really like click clacks up in her little <laughs> heels and like straightens his lapel and then Druid crafts a, another little flower and tucks it meaningfully into his little pocket. Like sharply <laughs> tightens his little lapel, like. Ow. Keep it safe. <laughs> Walks over to to Kaylin. No words are exchanged between the two, um, but they both just sort of bro nod at each other. <laughs> Damn. Um, they're, they're so male. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I'm the only guy here. <laughs> Someone <laughs> has to so bring that weird. stupid fucking energy here, and it's me. Um, Love you for uh, uh, Monroe. Then kind of closes <laughs> with uh, Echinacea. Just without question, tucks to the side so he doesn't squish the flower. <laughs> yeah, hey. Not knowing the meaning of it, they. Um. Think, oh goodness, Lazuli and Monroe must have bonded. Uh, yeah, no, no, she you, the man. If you look at Lazuli's face, you can see the defensiveness that is uh, very familiar from whenever she walked off and like gave him a talking to. So if you gave a, it's not an endearing. Take ten look paces in smart. whatever direction you want. She's like arms <laughs> crossed, shoulders broad. Like, don't you dare talk to. Me. To you my <laughs> so it can if you if you have any sensitivity to Lazuli's moods, you would know that what the vibe was. He just sort <laughs> of um takes out the, the pocket watch, the prelude. 
cups it between both of your hands. Thank you. I don't know if I'll make it back. I hope I do. If I don't, just know that I will protect you with this. Even if I'm gone. I, th- I hope I make it back. I, I hope you I do like too. living. I'm glad. I hope you're able to walk forward and handle things in the way that you want to. And I'm rooting for you the entire time. I'm going to start looking for ways for us to take down the Arcanum. To start cultivating If I am able to handle this, I will help you. Where is the um, the brass, uh, the rose of power on their person? It is in one of their terrariums. They haven't had a short rest, so yeah. it is not attuned. That's fine. Um, he just sort of lo- leans up toward the terrarium. And I'm right here. Keeping you safe. He said I can. Look at us leaving our mark. Look at us not being in cages. Stay safe, Monroe. You do the same. Though what we're both doing is dangerous and probably stupid on some degree, so... We'll just do our best to keep each other safe while we're away. Just kind of leans down, kisses their cheek. Good luck. Good luck to you. And stay safe. I beg. I beg you for the same. He takes a knee. And just... Squeezes their hands before getting up and walking out. All right. So, what's the plan here, folks? Um, we have to assume we're heading out. Is it uh, Mordred Kane's place? Leander, yeah. you are about to meet the only nice wizard I've ever met. <laughs> oh. Oh. The only nice wizard. Very exciting. All right. Good job. Sorry, the music changed. No, you're fine. All right. <laughs> All of you begin your trek. Um, do you take the trolley into town? Uh, you know where Morden Canaan's tower is. Um, so do you go ahead and take that? Is it steam oper- operated? Sure is. Hmm. I don't Zero. think I can fit in there. <laughs> Uh, you could maybe stand outside, you know, like this, and then Zio does the thing that people do, like, in the movies, where, like, they're, like, kind of standing outside the trolley, <laughs> like, hanging on a little bit. Oh, I have an idea. Um, they will conjure a floating disc. Uh, would you like to sit here? Um, sure. Stand on, stand, sit on it, okay. As Zekinesha hops onto the trolley, the disc follows, and they sit in the back. Oh. With their head over the side, looking at Oleander at the same eye level. Hey, hi. How are you doing? Okay. I'm well. How are you? You know, uh, traveling uh, in style. There's more of a breeze this way. It's lovely today. Sun's out. The sun's Zio... out. Oh, please. Oh, sorry. Zio didn't get a chance to really speak with Oleander um, the day before anything. So, um... So, Ollie, I think you see that Zio is an entirely different sort of person. The moment that they came down, um, they're a little bit more boisterous, more mischievous, I would say. 
um, and they've been sort of wide-eyed staring at you with like this kind of like the way that like owls sort of like do this thing where like like out of curiosity um see you're like, blooming huh what I said I see you're blooming sun's come out <laughs> How did you get your arm? Oh, uh, uh made a promise. Uh, and I plan to keep it. You keep How'd promises. you, uh, get your hair? I was born with it. Amazing. I was born with my tail, too. And then, like, Zeal, oh. like... Hey, my father... Lad. My father's a triton. And my mother is human. And I came out with my sister, and we're twins, but I'm different. I'm tiefling. Oh. It's very interesting, Zio. Uh, mm -hmm. Tell me more. And just kind of sits and, like, listens to you talk and ask questions. Oh, yeah. It's very interesting. Zio just, like, talks a mile a minute. Yeah. It's been a long time since Zio has met someone that just lets them talk and responds in interest. Well, that's a lot of information. I feel well informed. Zio Marino, sibling Zio. Sibling. Sibling. You are born of this world, and I am born in this world, and in that case, our roots are entangled. And that makes us siblings. So then you're Io's sibling, too. Hmm. Yes, I guess in a way. Because she's my sister. So then if she's my sister and you're my sibling, then you're sibling. And then that would also make me sibling with Nay and Lazuli and Kaylin. And we're we're not all related, but I do agree with you. We're all connected. I like that. I like it too. It's a comfort in that. <laughs> oh, a lot of people staring. Hi. Let well, me wave at me so this isn't weird. Hey. Hi there. Hi there. <laughs> hey. Good morning. Above Good the pearls, below the crown. <laughs> oh, oh. Is, this, is this how they wave? Sure. Full call? It's how I wave. Oh, well, well, I'll, I'll blush. <laughs> I don't know how they wave here. I like your outfit. It's very uh, natural. Who is talking yeah, to us yeah. right now? Just the random person. Some old halfling guy across the way from you. Amazing. I love. And your outfit is, um... It's like tweed. Uh, it's oh. like full academic. Uh, your outfit, um, looks nice, too. Scratchy, but I like it. Hey, it keeps you awake. <laughs> <laughs> I need that. It's a pleasure seeing you. Pleasure to see you as well. Um, Norfolk's nice. Norfolk's nice. Um, <laughs> you guys sort of venture forward. Um, you hear news reports uh, of um, uh, people looking for Gale Umbridge. Uh, you hear interesting reports coming out of Shenthir of exports not being met. Um, outposts specifically in Iothalor uh, not being accepted, uh, which is strange. Um, they're being sent back to Driften, um, and not being accepted at this point in time. Uh, it seems that Lady Elizabeth Whitmore has, uh, kind of not locked down, but just sort of, sort of hunkered Iothalor, uh, in a bit of a defensive measure. Do we hear news about how, That's have we heard news? Hear. We just, we haven't heard news of anything. Of any conflict? Nope. Yeah. No. No. Weird. Um, hey, what she did it say what the shipments were? Uh, shipments were medicine. They were fish from sea meat. Uh, they were uh, uh, there was also like linens and, and, and sorts. So it was it was like a general um, export that is made pretty regularly with with. Uh, and you guys know the Duchies of Driften are, are the main exports for both uh, the Kingdom of Kolderal and the Republic of Shenthir. Um, so yeah, it, it's it's odd that this export uh, was not 
accepted. They just created a new hospital. Why would she be turning away medicine? Or food. Be a question worth exploring. Zio goes on to <laughs> uh, info dump on uh, Ollie about their time in Iotha lore. Okay. Essentially, yeah. So, as much as possible, wasn't them getting there? I mentioned Sir and Nivian and um, their first friendship with Elizabeth Whitmore and her having this twin brother that Echinacea healed and would let Echinacea explain, like, all of the details yes. and uh he tried to amount a coup but it did fail um and now he is in the care of my friend casimir and he is trying to reintegrate into society and i'm very proud of him for doing that um because he was doing a lot of murder uh which is <laughs> bad um ideally it is bad yeah yeah and so we we really trust, we really trusted, or do we still trust? I don't know, but Elizabeth, she seemed really nice, but then we found out some stuff about her and how she um, ordered some things that are not very good. Um, specifically, a uh, Staff of Withering, which, uh, oh, you got to see Isteris. Um, Isteris used against the uh, uh, his own people um, when he killed Halitus. There's a lot of murder here. Uh, should I be concerned? It is concerning. We will... I didn't mention whenever I spoke to Viola that she was different. There was... It seems more com confirmation to our theories, but not directly so. I will tell you what, Oleander. We will avoid Iothalor for the time being and try to suss out what is happening there in a way that will not endanger you. Although it... You, you need not worry about me. If you are to go there, I will follow. We are going to Illenbell like you. Although we are not... We were not seeking the Luminara flower, now we are, because you are one of our flock. But we are going there to reunite Lazuli with her mother, and I feel that I should inform you, um, in case that you want to avoid violence. There will be no murder, but violence. Um, I... Violence is unavoidable. That's not my concern. Murder is very different than violence. I agree. Um, I'm just informing you now, because we'll be traveling together, uh, that I have uh, a husband. I also don't remember him, but he is being ensorcelled into doing more than violence, into murdering his kin. So I will be saving him uh, when... We are in Ill and Bell, and you are not obliged to uh, attend, but I will be trying to break the curse on him. And that is something obliged. that will be happening. But I am obliged. See, we are now connected. You know my name, and I know yours. Entangled. There is entangled, that's right. And because we are entangled, do you, in forests, trees communicate with one another through the roots. When one tree is in danger, it informs all the rest and they pour resources, you know, what they have within them into that tree in need. If you call, I will pour all of myself into you. We'll do the same for you. I know. Um, I will say, everybody is with you. Lapis, Uldiel, uh, Kaelin, the humble abode has been taken because the plan was Mordred Kane is going to teleport you on the road uh, closer to Illenbell than you have been. Um, so, but you guys do arrive 
to this brickstone street and this beautiful brickstone building, uh, this tall tower that reaches about six levels. Um, outside of it walks um, <laughs> what look to be three constructs who are sort of picking out garbage out front, and they're just sort of throwing it into like a wicker basket, just cleaning up. Uh, and you hear over like a, an arcane PA, PA, uh, PA system, uh, Mordred just sort of, we want to make sure it's nice and presentable for our guests. We want to ensure that everything looks good when people enter. I'm thinking about franchising, goddammit! Um, but you guys exit and you see no, uh, you know, no signage or anything like that. But um, do you approach? There is this large uh, cherry wood door uh, with a what looks to be a large wolf um, knocker uh, on it. Oh, cherry wood. Good wood. Are we? Do we knock mm -hmm. or do we just walk in? We go walk in. A good wood. Ah, this wood was from a older tree, a tree that had lived a full life. Ah. You can see in the rings here. Okay. Mm. Um, as the door <laughs> opens, uh, the constructs are like, "Wait a minute! Wait a minute!" But you knock the door right into Mordred Kane, uh, who's just sort of, <laughs> "Ah, right." Oh. Hello. Oh. Uh, good <coughs> evening. Fuck. Why do you? Why are you just standing in front of the door? I was about to open it. I knew you were here. That's weird. Why do you know you? We were here. My co the construct saw you. They let me know that there were guests here. That's creepy. Do you just watch people as they walk by? Uh, around my building? Yes. It's my building. I keep it safe. That's mm. kind of the point. Would you like to come in? Um, you see Mordred Cain, who uh, is, uh, looks to be this early 40s human man with this black hair just sort of swept back. These green, uh, he seems to be wearing more mages attire, so like robes and uh, bit armaments uh, around himself. Um, he just sort of opens. I'm giving you free reign to shop here, so please welcome. I'm thinking about franchising and names would be good. At the store? Yes. I see. Hmm. What do you sell here? Arcane wares, um, potions, alchemical equipment, anything. A wandrite, a spellcaster, or a person of the sciences could have, could imagine. Morty, this is Ollie. Ollie, hey. Mordred Kane. Pleasure to meet you. Ah, nice to meet you. You are f tall. You are you. <laughs> I am me. It was a pleasure to see you. I see that you have met some of my favorite people in Norfolk. Uh, Echinacea, oh, yes. Lazuli, Zio, Kaelin, you. Lapis, good to see you. I don't know her name. She's scary in a good way. Please, come in. And as you all enter the space, we're going to go ahead and take a break. Um, so we're going to take our second break here. We'll be back in about 10 minutes. We will see you guys shortly. Bye bye
Quincy and here. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Chapter 35 of No ah. Realms to Lesh. Uh, last we left off, the crew is making their way into Mordred Kane's shop, which, Tolly, this is Morden Kanan in this world. He's a twink. <laughs> I love that for him. Mm, yeah, me too. Um, but you've all entered, and, and he just sort of... Oh, oh, oh. What can I help you with? What are you all looking for? Because I know I will help you all get a bit closer to Illumbel than you are currently. I'm happy to help. Um, what are you looking for? Mm. Do you have clothes? Do I have clothes? Absolutely. But not magical. Yes, normal clothes, yes. I imagine you will need warmer attire for... The snow-capped peaks of Shenfir. Oh, yeah, that too. Can I get a hat? Yes, absolutely. Okay. I will say, if you're planning on purchasing magical items, the clothes are free. A gift from your friend Mordred. Uh, that is very it's generous. It's really kind. Uh, I don't know what I would ask for. Uh what about shelter? Do you have, like, a magic tent, I guess? I don't know. Well, I have humble abodes, um, but I believe this lot already has one. Oh, um, it travels with us. Yes. I didn't know that. Yep. Uh, you would have seen, uh, as everybody was kind of packing up to go, um, the humble abode shrink into a one inch by one inch cube and, and stowed uh, away into a pouch. Yeah. No. Oh. Um. So, if you're looking for potions, if you're looking for scrolls, if you're looking for any sort of magical wares, I'm sure I can help you. Would you happen to have um, a potion of fire resistance? I have a thing with fire. That I do. Uh, are you looking for just one? Uh, uh, money is How much a social are they? construct. Uh, well, uh, they're not um, particularly, I would say, 50 gold pieces uh, per. They're right, though. Money is a social construct. Yes, but it is one that I worship, so I will need the money. I would like to buy 10 for Oleander. No. Oh. So 500 gold pieces, Echinacea? Here you go. Thank you very much. You are... Uh, you Lizzie are... slides 250 to Echinacea to... Stop it! Okay. No. <laughs> um, so that is that is purchased. Um, if you guys have, I know shopping is a fucking bitch and a half. So if you guys have ideas of magical wares, you're able, you're going to be able to get your clothing here. You're going to be able to get anything like that. But in regards to anything magical, um, is there anything that folks are looking for in particular? Um. Oh my goodness. If people need time to uh, shop. Like in your all's inventories, I'm, like Lazuli has a little scene that I can, I can razzle you, dazzle you with, or while well, you guys actually just scroll and plan. Cool. Okay. Um, do you have a dressing room? Yes. Do uh, you mind if I if I occupy it? Uh, no, that's what it is for. Right. Well, then that's what I will use it for. Please. And she like kind of you know how sometimes people. <laughs> walk when they have to go to the bathroom <laughs> it's not that but like it's like that is how she kind of like skitter skirts in there and okay. like a lot of the primness and properness melts and she looks into the mirror searchingly and she feels alone and she's kind of like fussing with the well tailored structured garment that she's wearing and looks back into the mirror and at the gold in her eyes and then the things that viola was saying is you can't even stand looking at yourself something like that she had never thought of it that way but now she's starting to feel it and she fidgets with her bag of holding which she knows holds the 
story of the sun sunflower king and seeing Ollie with all of the sunflower Regalia. imagery. Yeah. She's remembering it. And so she looks back at the mirror again and thinks of Aureli in like this kind of pleading way of I'm alone and I'm lost and I don't know what to do and I've gotten myself into something bigger than I think I I meant and I don't trust her. I'll say give me a this. give me a religion yeah. check. Yeah. Actually, instead of a religion check, roll me a d100. Okay. E100. <laughs> 79. Your reflect your reflection begins to shift and arrive in the mirror uh, as a crone is seen in front of you. One you've seen before, one who's come to your dreams, one you saw earlier today. I do not say these things to hurt you, Zuli. I say them because they need to be heard. No matter how cruel they are. I was right. And I'm sorry I was right. You're heading into something dangerous. You need the tools at your disposal to protect your friends from the dangerous. I can find another way. As quickly as you found me? Are you sure about that? You called to Aurelia, but I way. am the one that answered. Maybe it's not Aureli. Maybe it's someone else. But I know... I know... How I deserve to be treated. And it's not like this. Like what? You when want my people friends... to, lie with, to lie to you? That's not it. I deserve my autonomy. You have it. I asked you to come to Drew Kamesh. I will ask you in the future. I've taken nothing from you. You take the truth. You don't tell me truly what I am doing until after it is done. Well, then I will tell you the truth moving forward with the task that you have. And if I say no? Then you say no. You'll find and another way to partake in this pact. Six months is a fair timeline for you to meet the contents of that rhyme. I don't know if it's what I want. I don't think it aligns with, aligns with my values. And I think I have the right to explore other options before I lock myself into anything. Despite how you say it. you say this as if you have not locked yourself into the pact already. You agreed to it. You've garnered benefit from it. It's already agreed to. And it is already in action. If you wish to break the pact, you you may. Oh. But there are consequences to such actions. And that is not a threat. That is the truth. What are they? You will be watched. And you will be I pursued. Hope. That I don't even know. That was not told to me. It's in the contents of your pack. The arcane eye, and it, it is on the verbiage. Mm. You were made aware. Mm. And you accept it anyway. Is the power I give you so bad? It is not the power. It is... I do not fully understand the effects of the actions in which you ask me to take. And I do not feel comfortable with that. Then I will not ask you to take part in any more actions, but you will. If you want the power 
uphold the end of your bargain. Your bargain. One that you brought to me. I will not be painted a villain. Mind. And you are allowed to reap the consequences of that. That is the autonomy you seek. That is, again, not a threat. That is what will happen. Do you wish to sever your pact with me now? Or would you like the remainder of your six months to contemplate? I am not unfair. I never said you were. I'm just... You're scared. I'm just taking s stock of my actions. I don't feel like we're working together. I don't like the way that you speak to me. Or how I feel when I return from speaking with you to my friends. I think it's worthy to pursue the unknown and strength. And I feel like I have walked the line enough to understand that this is potentially a path that I am not confident. So I, I don't. So then I ask the question again. Do you wish to sever your pact with me now? Or do you wish to take the remainder of the time to contemplate? You will face consequences for breaking the pact. You've already garnered benefits. Again, this is just the truth. This is not a threat. And you will lose the powers that you've gained. Effective immediately. That decision is yours. I think I would like more time. I want to be left alone, but I... I did not call you. You have six months. The visage fades. In this moment, you remain in the changing room. Only your reflection greeting you. Whatever that means to you in this moment in time. She's holding herself, realizing now that the change bringer didn't come to her in the changing room. She's going to sit in there a while. I'll let people, okay. other people do the th their thing, but she's going All to right. stay in the changing room. That makes sense. Kind of, okay. Yeah. I'm going to give you an inspiration point for that scene. Um, all right. So, Ollie, Zio, Echinacea, what are you looking for here? Zio. Ollie's poor. Uh, oh. oh, no, go ahead. Go ahead Ollie's go ahead, poor. <laughs> Ollie's poor. Ollie's just uh, sort of looking around, touching things. Yeah. More Zio. Stuff. If that, um, if Zio sees that, they're like, Ellen Bell is really cold. Are you going to be okay? Oh, yes. Um, I, I travel plenty. Uh, the cold should not be a problem because, and I, he points to the hat that he has been given by Morgan Ganon. It's one of those ones with the ear flaps and the little tuck on the top. <laughs> like the Peruvian, like, shepherd's hat? Yeah, the Peruvian, hat. <laughs> yeah, the Peruvian shepherd's hat. Um, Zio's like, that looks very warm. Would you like a coat? Sure. I'm not sure I can fit one properly because, uh, you know, they are. Well, Morty, Morty's magic. I'm sure I can make it make fit. It yeah. No. That is no problem that I cannot solve for you, my friend. Uh -oh. You do you make it yourself? Do you, are you a seamstress? A seamstress? <laughs> no. Um, but I do have uh, a 
a friend, a construct of mine that can alter anything that you have. Okay. What are you looking for? A long coat? Uh, you know what? I've never had one. So that sounds lovely. Okay. Uh, you see as this sewing machine that sort of sprouts an upper body and arms begins to work on a long coat, uh, adding alterations, oh, extending so it, uh, cool. and making one side a bit larger to accommodate for your arm, uh, the wood that is sprouting from it. Um, and uh, you're, it is this like deep green. Um, it embroiders the symbol of the sunflower enclave on the pocket. Uh, just kind of looking at your denotation, sort of takes it and kind of looks. Here you are. Thank you. What is your name? I am Seamstress. Seamstress. That's a lovely name. It is fitting. <laughs> ah, and sibling Zeo, thank you. Now you can have a coat without having to worry about being too close to the fire. Oh. Um, thank you. I'll pay for it. Uh, and then Zio um, also um, it has been looking for not only warm clothing for yep. themselves, but also able um, to find it, no problem. Yes, but also finds a um, different coat. Um, they have been walking around just dressed in their scorched uh, violet. Gear. Yeah, their violet tunic, that gold sash, and the um, tan pants. Um, missing that green cloak. Um, and as they're looking around, they find something that reminds them from home. Um, it covers mainly one side of their body so it's it has a single sleeve and it's um ties in like a little bow like almost like a like you would with a with a robe yep um but it ties together and then their arm with their tattoos is uh left visible um and then the other arm is covered um in this sort of half half robe uh and then they take out their uh gold sash and like wrap it around it um and look at themselves in the mirror and like sort of give themselves a happy nod with the way that they look um different no longer in the green of the bright fury um and then find themselves like a warm looking uh probably wool or like furred lined not furred but like faux fur if that yeah, exists yeah, yeah, 100%, yeah. <laughs> yeah um but very warm lined um jacket yeah okay to, anything to magical for zeo yes actually um zeo happily walks up to morty and says do you have anything that could make me stronger even if it was for just a little bit of time and maybe something that can make me faster even if it's just for a little bit of time um essentially i'm asking Ooh. for if available potion of haste a... and potion of hill giant strength that i can do uh pulls out this like uh spherical brass vial uh and sort of puts it in front this is a potion of haste it's about 750 gold pieces a piece um yeah, you see inside this sort of like um uh, quite um fluid it almost looks like it's trying to get out of the vial it, it's moving so quickly um this potion of haste okay um, and then uh, you're presented with this sort of iron vial uh, that is a, a potion of hill giant strength. It is this kind of like bright and um, uh, uh, almost fiery. Mm. And then so this you, uh, one is um, 400 gold pieces a piece. So it's hill giant straight, right? Hill to be specific. Hill, yep. Okay, so hill and then one potion of haste so it's 400 and 750. yep okay so altogether that's uh 1150 gold pieces if can you're I just have looking two? For... can no. i have two of the fast ones yeah uh 
So all together then, that's 1,900 gold pieces. Zio happily hands it over. Okay, you can add two potions of haste and one potion of hill giant strength to your inventory. Just kind of like grabs it, thank you, and then puts them right into their uh, bag holding. Of course. Um, Echinacea? They have a. They have things that they want to purchase, but I think first things first. They have a pair of trousers and a flowy shirt um, that they go to the dressing room with, and they go not because they want to try them on, though they will do it as an excuse. Um, they will lean to wherever whatever is closed and say, "Lizzie, yes." You've been in here for quite a while, and while I know you're very pretty, I also think that usually you see that you're pretty right away, and then you want to show us, and mm. you're not. Incredible. So you're looking into the dressing room? No, they're, they're like leaning face flush with the mm. fabric of like the dressing room. That's very kind. Um, I'm, I'm changing. Do you want me to leave you alone? Could... When when Mordred is free, do you mind asking him to come by? Of course. Um... The fuck is he gonna do? I'm sorry, I'm not muted. <laughs> she's going to ask for something. Um... And then, and then maybe... Could you check back later? Um, they're not looking, but a little hand slips through the, um, fabric and is like, I'm afraid to feel around because I don't want to grab it, but if you want to hold a hand, this is a hand. <laughs> oh, do you need the changing room? I just realized. No! There's more, She's no. There's more than one. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh! What? Just if Mordred... Okay, if Mordred walked in to he, say that he there's does. more than one. Yeah, there's more than one. Uh, is okay. everything all right? Uh, I believe leave with, like, a word. Sorry, I love uh, it. I leave. You can see that um, the hand that squeezed Echinacea's is, like, there's nothing on it. So she has removed, like, some clothing. Um, um, I'm not going to come in. What can I do for you? You can actually come in. She's uh, she's covered up, but like he doesn't yes. know that. <laughs> I am I'm closed. Oh, perfect. So, so you can see her hair is down, um, like long and like wispy, and she like has the cloak of many eyes over her, oh. and she's been attuning with it. Okay. Um, good. I look. am lost, and I need something to help me. You know of my condition. Yes. And I... I don't know if regret is the word yet, but maybe I'm close to it. Buyer's remorse. Ha <laughs> 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 I, I wanted to be stronger for my friends, and I did become that. But I do not like who I'm getting close to. And so... Mm. Do you have any advice? Something to help me? Wow. Oh, let me put on my mature hat for a moment. I think we live in a world where power is something that needs to be seized by the individual. You have made a pact with a powerful one. I imagine you fear being used. Yes. Your sense of self being taken from you. Yes. That cannot be taken if you do not give it. So I say, if I were in your predicament, gain the power that she gives and use it when the time is right against her. 
But what if she makes me do things that harm other people, but I don't even realize it? Well? I don't know the consequences of what she's asking. And I'm afraid... Either way. You can break your pact and lose your powers, which is... Which I sense you don't want to do, which I understand. But there must be some other people. I, I, I see other people who have... Who have different arrangements, or... Make it on their own. There's Archfey. I have the opportunity to be that. But I feel it is Archfey, that's good to know. What I'm seeing in your group, you are all growing. Yes. You are not an Archmage like myself. None of you are. But what you are doing is walking the world and making that path possible. You cannot... It is not something to hold yourself to the standard of, because you are working towards it. And working towards it is never enough. Trust me, I understand that. It's fucking bullshit. Because you want to be there now, because, hell, you think you deserve it. But, it is okay to work towards something. But there are many paths towards that something, and I'm not sure if this is a path that... It's noble. I'm not sure I'm, I'm a noble person. Maybe noble's not my path, but this feels... Dark. Dark. It's mm. interesting that they, yeah, they both kind of... Well, maybe the path is dark, but maybe you light it. Oh. It is what you do with the abilities you gain, and if you are being asked to do things, is it in your pact, the verbiage, that you have to do these small things for whoever it is you made a pact with? I have no fucking idea. Not you... a death hack. Oh my gods. All right. Well. Yeah, she just kind of relays, gives the spark notes. It's like, holy shit. I was young that... once. <laughs> Change your no, um, no, because, uh, again, you gain the abilities, and, and it is your responsibility to use them in the ways in which you choose. Um, right. If there are secondary asks, I say deny them. Because okay. what you need to remember is that she is gaining something from you in the ways that you are gaining something from her. That yes. is how mutual packs work. So, if you... Hmm. If you work to... Um, I don't know. Circumvent her wishes by excelling in your own. I see no ill. No ill done from that. And plus, then you get to show it to her. Do you know my mother? What? I don't know. We're, go we're going to Ellen. Who is your mother? You <laughs> Just going to say. Um, <laughs> Aura. <laughs> Um, does not sound familiar to me, no. Do you know my mommy? I do not know your mommy. <laughs> I, I do not. I'm oh. looking for people who know better than I do, I suppose. <sighs> I'm sorry I don't know better than you at this point in time. I think... No, you, this is helpful. I think if you're gaining abilities, you use them in the ways that serve you, and don't adhere to any secondary asks, asks that do not meet the confines of your pact. Because that's mm. when they will take advantage of you. Mm. When you express that kindness and willingness to go. Not that I know anything about that. <clears throat> Well, to stop the death pack. You become stronger than her. Can you give me something that will make her me stronger? <laughs> not, um, not right now. Oh. But I, it's like asking someone to give you, you know, I don't know if this was some sort of tabletop role-playing RPG. Uh, give me a level up. I can't do that for you. But you're venturing a path that will help you cultivate the skills you need. But what I can give you, maybe some magic items or some potions that can make you feel 
a little stronger than you do right now. I think I need to be in here a little longer, but thank you. All right. <laughs> take the, take <laughs> the time you need, sweet girl. Um, <laughs> thank you for your help. Um, that's what it was. Yes, of course, you're welcome. He's like, I don't fucking know if I did anything correct here. <laughs> it's like, I don't fucking know. I'm just a guy. I'm just Ken. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, okay, and then, sorry, Echinacea, what were you purchasing? They are purchasing a new outfit, which they are not putting on right away, so I won't describe it. Um, okay. They would, like, I'm looking for a scroll of Speedy Courier. I want to learn that one very badly. Okay, um, I have that. Um, you had the potions of fire resistance. Do you also have necrotic resistance? I do indeed. Uh, okay. Same same price there. Mm -hmm. The um, yep. Perfect. I'll purchase six. I'm keeping track. Okay. Um, a potion of maximum power. Potion of maximum power. Yes, I have that. I would like that, and I would like the ingredients. That I can do. Sort of and cultivates together the um, ingredients for that. And do you have ingredients for the restorative elixir, the arcanist's restorative elixir? Oh, absolutely. I keep that on hand um, <laughs> all the time. Yes, I can do that for you. It's very smart. Uh, we need it sometimes. We really do. Yes. Um, okay, and the speedy courier... It's a fourth level. Uh, um, you don't I'll, have to do the math right now either. I can do it and just get rid of it in my inventory later. Altogether, you're going to be paying about 3,000 gold pieces. Woo! What am I... Wait, for what? For... Everything. You've got 300 on the necrotic, then... Ingredients for maximum power and restorative elixir. I uh, yep, correct. That's everything, including the scroll of speedy courier as well. Okay. So we'll just say three thousand GP. I suppose I was a bit exorbitant. I will just take the um, the speedy courier. Do you need more, Echinacea? I, no, I just, I have to, I have to learn some other spells. Um, well, so I will just take the scroll. Hmm, you know what? Actually, take the scroll, free of charge. Uh, this will knock down your price to about 1750. Um, this is for the information about the preludes. That's my payment to you. Oh. Free of charge? That's very generous. I am very Knowledge. generous. Knowledge is... Pricey. Oh, power. Oh. Oh. <laughs> that too. <laughs> so, is that price more amicable? I can't... I can't... They, they have a little ledger with all the spells they need to learn and the costs of them, and they um, they did the math for the potions and scratched it out, and then they read it, write it back in. Yes. Yes, it is. Thank you. Of course. Huh. Well. All right. Now, and another payment. This will give you a 50% discount the next time you come to one of my establishments. I need a name. If I'm to franchise, the fuck am I calling this place? Mortis. Mortis is good. I'm definitely thinking about Mortis. Yes, I think your name should definitely be a part of it. Mazuli had a... I liked that Mazzoli one. had a really good one. Mm -hmm. I like that one. I just worry it's a bit wordy. A lot in the mouth. Well, what do you consider... What is one word that could encapsulate everything you have? Mordred Kane's... Gift. Something. Mortical, like Morty and Magical put together. Nope, I hate that. <laughs> I hate that a lot. You know what? That's it. Mordred Kane's gift. My I gift like to the world. 
Oh, it's a nice gift. Indeed. Kind of con- it's kind of conceited. Absolutely it is. It should be. I made it. <laughs> All right. Well, if there's not anything else you need, I believe it's time to take you where you need to go. I do need one what? thing. Oh, please. Bring it in. Oh, okay. Uh, where hugs is... you. Thank you very much. Where is yeah, Lazuli? You're good, okay. The changing room. She's like, contemplating some things. I like that Lazuli just gets left behind like a kid no. who's like hiding at the department store. Yeah, like where is Lazuli? Zio goes <laughs> find Lazuli. She has the like a sleepover at the department store ep- like filler episode. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, sorry. Something's in my eye. It's burning really bad. No, you could take your time. Zio goes and runs over to the changing rooms. Do you want to take a quick break, Lou? To yeah. Okay. Something. Well, we're. Oh, buddy. we're no, gonna... I'll be okay. I'll be okay. Okay. Oh, I just okay. was saying yeah, and just in general. I'll be alright. Uh, come in. <laughs> Lazuli. Yeah. Did you get dressed? Are you dressed? I'm something. <laughs> Can you come in here? She's just still huddled in her book. Yeah, Zio like opens the curtains, like peeks in. What's wrong? I think you're someone who I want to talk to. Okay. And then is Lazuli on the ground, like sitting? She's just sitting on a chair, like a bench, you know, just like curled up with her cloak. Um, Zio gets down on the ground, crisscross applesauce, and does that thing, like little kids, like really scooch forward. I'm regretting the pact that I made because the person that I made it with is not very nice and even though the power is great I'm not sure if it's something that I want even though if I'm strong enough I could potentially use it against them and I heard about your night last night and I wanted your advice too oh um well, if it were me, I'd... Th- well, uh, it... I said no to Istris. I don't really know why you took the pact with Viola. You've told me that it's because you wanted to become stronger. But if it hurts or pains you, then you should walk away from it. Not the pain that it causes me. I'm a fear what it will do to the people around me. Or to do the future. I saw things yesterday. That I don't know what the effects are. And it's making me question my choices. I don't think it's fair uh, for, um, uh, well, hmm, hmm. I I guess this is all very sudden. Yes. Um, because it does sound really similar to everything that I've been through. Mm. And I'm still not okay with all of that. But, and I think Zio like puts their puts their hands on Lazuli's like knees and then just kind of like leans forward like just like this looking up at Lazuli. Mhm. Do you care about Viola? Well, I don't know what or who she is. She said she's different. And if I kill her, she'll be different again. It just, it's intriguing. That's why I started it. I like knowledge. I like knowing how things can be changed and interconnected and the power and it's fascinating, but I don't think I'm aware of the full repercussions of it, but if you don't stand for something, you'll stand for anything. Like she just, and I, do you? 
trust Viola over us. Mm. I trust you more. Do you trust that we can protect you and ourselves? I trust that we'll try our best. I don't know. But I don't know. Um... I'm sad you weren't there yesterday. I think it would have been really nice for you to hear what Halida said. What did he say? Hope is what's most important. And we have to try. But if she doesn't If she does if she doesn't inspire any hope in you you can try and change your mind but that might be hard that will be the hardest path hmm. I guess it's just coming to terms with if you're willing to fight for something even if it means fighting for someone that could hurt you. Well, technically, anyone can hurt me. You could. I will never do that. But technically, Not physically, one of us, we could both die in here. Not live. We have the option to kill each other right now, but we choose not to. I'm going to do that. Nay, we'll, I know we'll you're allow not going it. to do that. But... That is something that we all have the capability of doing. But we don't. Hmm. I never <laughs> liked I never liked your pact with with her, but there's consequences if I break it. People will come after me too. But I guess that's just I'll join the club. <laughs> <laughs> Come then. You. You shouldn't feel like. You shouldn't feel caged. We are all. Everyone is entitled to spread their wings. Her little, like, her wings flutter a bit in the back. Hmm. I think, I don't know my mother, so I don't know if she would have any advice on it. But before I make my decision, I want to meet her. But it will That's be mine. made soon. Until then, I think I will... Be more of an active participant in my own feelings and direction instead of just following what is fascinating. <laughs> she just kind of rocks a little bit. You should talk to Ollie. Ollie said knowledge is power, so maybe that has something to do with it. Hmm. Yes. Thank you for coming to check on me. I must get ready now. I am not dressed under here. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, yes. You get dressed. Lazuli, are you looking for anything potion-wise, magical-wise? Anything before There's you guys so depart? so many magical potions, but I want something like light-themed or magical items, but something that's like... Uh, Bright light. We can also shiny. we can also retroactively get you something if you want to take a longer look at like items in particular. Yeah. Okay. But just know she's decked out in her uh, cloak of many eyes is white, or however she needs to do it. Um, I do think I like the uh, there was something about like, but I think it's another cloak is the changing. There's two items that have different. Like you can change your appearance, or well, once once the item attunes to you, it can look like whatever you want it to look like. Oh, 
Right. Um, well, then it's going to be like have a fluffy white collar and it's going to be, yeah, white with like embroidered gold eyes. Um, okay. And yeah. Uh, it's kind of like all, around the, all white around winter the collar. look. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Perfect. Um, all right. You guys are all together at this point. Um, clothes have been purchased, items have been purchased. Uh, Mordred sort of looks. You're headed to Edinburgh, correct? I'll get you as close as I can go. Uh, it's a beautiful place. Where's Where's the goal? Do I um? I I don't remember anything about. Oleander, have you been to Edinburgh before? You have not. I have not. I have not. But what an adventure. What an adventure. Did we get a location for Aura Isledale? Uh, no. Well, we know of the hospital, right? Yes. The yes. Clinic. Yes, sorry. The, um... I forget the name of my own... I haven't been there. Bell Rose uh, Medical Bell Institute. Rose Medical clinic. The Bell Rose Medical Institute? Wait a minute. What's your name? Yes. Ah, exciting. Uh, I'd love to hear about your experiences there. And uh, I know that um, you don't remember much, so I hope that your time in Illumina is gentle. And I hope that you learn the important things that you need to know. They were going to clasp his hands. Thank you. Thank you for doing this. You... I know you didn't have to, and it means the world, and the only other wizards I have met have been members of the Magus Arcanum that are not like you. The Magus Arcanum is not great. So I apologize for that. Selfishness on a grand scale is what I recall. But we don't have to be like them. Are you ready? Yes. And with you, I believe it's Aganesha, Lazuli. Oh my god, math. I can't do math. I'm gay. <laughs> Kayla. There's seven. Lapis. Yep. Seven. Perfect for a transportation spell. Now, I recommend uh, you hit um, some of the taverns in Illinville. It's a wonderful wine town. Phenomenal vacation spot. Highly recommend uh, taking in some of the food and drink there. Oh, do you have recommendations? Oh, yes. My favorite is Hoplite. It is a beautiful uh, seaside tavern. You see the snow-capped mountains behind you and the frozen ocean in front of you, but the ambiance is so warm. and The music, top-notch. Morty? Mm. Could you get a message out to Roman Dew? Just, um... Uh, sure. Just to let him know that I'm sad that I couldn't say farewell, and that I hope... That I hope he does well. That's it. That I can do. No problem. Well. It was good to see all of you. If you would please stand on the circle... (laughs) You see this transportation circle around you. Um, he begins to harness the weave as this, um, you've seen before, but this uh, green electrical energy begins to dance between his fingers as he swirls the sigils in the air. As the sigil uh, on beneath you begins to emit this bright green light and, and sort of shine on you as all of you, uh, Echinacea, Lazuli, Zio, Oleander, Kalen, Lapis, Uldiel, are transported to the cold biting north of the Republic of Shenfir, not far off from the road, but you know that you are just a couple days away from Ill and Bell.